Hey, we're live. Welcome to Massive Iron Live. It is Friday. What is it? March 19th. We're almost to April. We're almost to April and winter is almost over. So I uh, appreciate you guys joining in. We'll be on as long as uh, you guys can tolerate us. We have three ugly faces today rather than two ugly faces. Um, we have Canada, we have Texas, and we have Ohio. So I appreciate everybody joining in. Um, normally our Q&As, we will you know, go through, go through the comments. Uh, this week we have a special guest, uh, Vegan Gaines. So we will be monitoring the comments. If you guys have any specific uh, questions or whatever that happen to be pertinent to the discussion, we will post them up. If not, things will be functioning a little bit differently than a normal live video. So I'm just gonna check Facebook, make sure live on the book of faces and we are good. So welcome guys. Um, how are things going in, in Canada, uh, Mr. Gaines, uh, with the lockdowns? Have you survived the past year? Yeah, uh, the lockdown was pretty annoying, but I built a home gym, so uh, I've at least been able to exercise and get stronger and at least do something productive. Uh, I'd say without the gym, I'd probably lose my mind. So where, but, do, you, where do you train uh, up there? Do you have a home gym or, or access to yeah. a gym? Yeah, uh, literally right behind me. Um, if I were to put down my green screen, you can see I have a rack back there, bench and everything. Got quite a bit of weight. So, yeah, just basically in my living room. Gotcha. So anybody tuning in, if you have a uh, specific uh, topic of discussion that you'd like to see us address, feel free to post them in the comments section. If not, we'll roll forward as normal. I'm surprised. And... Uh, we have a we have a running challenge if we get to 100 live viewers uh robert has to often flex so if we get to 150 nah, both of you have a post on, that's unfair yeah sure yeah the winner the winner takes home the hyper trophy i'm, I'm gonna let you do that with steve i have zero interest in uh ever flexing on camera for the the youtube universe <laughs> So, uh, where, where would you like to start? Uh, anything you guys would like to kick off with as far as an icebreaker? All right. Well, I mean, uh, I, I don't know what type of format you like wanted to do. If you wanted like a, a more of a debate type of thing or a discussion, but uh, when I emailed you, I just gave a debate proposition. Uh, my exact proposition was that vegan diet is suitable for athletes and is equivalent to an omnivorous diet when it comes to facilitating muscle growth. So if you want to, I don't know, argue that point or maybe discuss some of the technical details of like a vegan diet, muscle building. Sure, I'll, I'll start off and then, um, you know, I'll have Robert jump in and then we'll, we'll have you end cap this one. Um, you know, the way uh, I handle things and the way um, my philosophy and the way Robert is pretty much uh, in line, you know, not in line with, but we see things similarly is that uh, when it comes to to diet, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not pro or con, you know, anything that's, that is whole foods, real foods, um, you know, single ingredient foods. So I'm certainly not against the vegan diet. Uh, we've talked many, many times on this channel that if it is a diet that is, uh, somebody is interested in, we just tell them to do their research. Uh, I do my research. I have a bunch of books back oh, wrong thumb bunch of books back here um that i research the vegan diet uh we actually pull a, we try our best to learn from uh the recipes and the you know culture if you will so we can eat better with our you know micronutrients our our daily intake um you know, maximize that, uh, try new things, try different flavor combinations, et cetera. So I have nothing against that. Um, the only thing we ever do is try to get people to educate themselves on how to do it in a healthy manner, you know, how to get their protein up, how to fill in any holes in their diet. And I'm certainly not an expert in that and uh, don't pretend to be. So Robert, would you like to add anything to that? No, no. I think you you pretty much touched on everything. I think, in general, uh, it's it's you you are certainly capable of building a, a phenomenal physique, being strong, performing at a high level, recovering, living a good life on a vegan diet. 
Um, I think what, like, to, to Steve's point, we're trying to simplify things as much down for the average individual as possible. So obesity is this rampant thing, and there's so much mental gymnastics and bickering and, and things that people get mired down in the minutiae of all this bullshit. And, like, so our hard thing is always to try to make it simple. So focusing on whole foods, and I think if we start to try and chip away at that and maybe say, all right, well, here, let's, let's we're going to remove, like, if we're going to go to the carnivore diet, you have to remove all of these foods and just eat animal products. So you do the vegan diet. You're going to have to remove every animal product from your diet or take steps to gradually do that. I think that adds another layer of complexity and another barrier to entry for some people. That's just going to make them a little bit more likely to fall off the bandwagon and have a little bit harder time sticking to it. From like a performance and recovery standpoint, yeah, it's perfectly well and suitable to, to be able to function and thrive on a vegan diet. Is it the, the diet that I'm going to do? No, not necessarily. I enjoy all kinds of food. So I think that's, that's where it is. Um, there are a few nutrients that you may need to, to have. Uh, you know, a closer eye on doing a strictly vegan diet, and we can get into some of that. Uh, you know, a little bit later. But uh, I think that's that's my initial opening uh, thing. And I would like to add, um, you know, Richard, that like I'm sure you get a lot of people that make irrational or foolish comments about the vegan diet or assumptions uh, that you can or can't do something. And and I think we all know that's you know that's nonsense. Um, I, I dove into the running world, the ultra running world. And there are many, many vegans in the, in the world, one of, uh, or in that world. One of my good friends, David Clark, uh, was a vegan. He passed away last year. A lot of vegans in that culture. Um, yeah. You know, so I see a lot of, and I will tell you, I've, and I've said this before, and I'll, and I'll stand firm. You're hard-pressed to find a better athlete in the world than a ultra runner that does trail running. And these guys are fueling on on uh, vegan diets, a lot of them are feeling on vegan diets. So it begs the question, um, you know, how are they eating to fuel this amazing performance? So it's something that's very curious to me and something, you know, that I try to try to learn from, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, there are a lot of vegans that are extremely successful in uh, like long distance kind of marathon like sports. And I think a, a vegan diet uh, in, in that sort of sport in particular, any sport that requires like a lot of endurance, I think veganism probably gives you a bit of an edge. Um, probably due to some of the cardiovascular benefits, it improving like blood flow. Um, it also like typically when you're just eating plant foods as well, you're eating like a lot of high fiber plant foods, a lot of antioxidants. So compared to maybe other omnivorous diets, you're probably getting in more antioxidants that help you kind of recover faster from training, which is important if you're doing like extremely long sort of training, uh, training sessions for marathon running and stuff. Uh, but I like based on the research I've seen now and just anecdotally overall, I'd say a vegan diet is probably equivalent when it comes to strength sports, like building muscle. Um, I've known a lot of lifters who've claimed that, uh, you know, once they switch to vegan diet, like Clarence Kennedy, he, he said, no difference, no drop in performance. Um, and then I, I've seen a few anecdo anecdotal examples with uh, like Patrick Baboumi and the vegan strongman. He said his numbers flew up. Uh, now he does strongman. It's, it's a little bit different. Like there are some endurance aspects to that sport. So, you know, maybe for something like strongman, it might give you an edge potentially, but I, I doubt it. I think generally in strength sports, it's, it's around equivalent. So, um, like uh, this is this is going a little differently than I expected. Like it sounds like you two guys are pretty much on board with like yeah. Chances are if you're you know eating a vegan diet, as long as you're not doing something stupid like I don't know eating raw fruitarian and you only eat bananas, you know like as long as you have a, ba a balanced diet, you're getting enough protein in. Like you're going to be able to build as much muscle. Your athletic pursuits are going to be uh, essentially as good. Um, so if that's the case, uh, I, I know this wasn't really supposed to be the topic of discussion, but I mean, you wouldn't recommend eating human beings, right? Like, you know, humans are made out of flesh. We're made out of like meat and protein. Like clearly you'd have an ethical issue with eating human beings. So like, I think we should be kind of uh, cognizant of, you know, the ethical choices we're making when we're eating. So if you could, like, if you could eat a diet that is just as 
just as good in terms of like supporting your athletic pursuits. Um, that is arguably a bit healthier because vegans, vegetarians, they do tend to live a bit longer. They tend to have lower risk of chronic disease. And on top of that, the ethical benefits, you know, you're not torturing and murdering animals. Why don't you switch to a vegan diet? Well, you know, we uh, this is something we've talked about before on this channel. I mean, you know, I don't tend to look at and and I'm no expert in it, but I don't tend to, you know, I don't study uh, or analyze um you know, I, I don't have time because it's not my my forte to study or analyze, you know, like what's going on, uh, you know, how how meat is produced, that sort of thing. And I don't miss it at all when I say that. So just understand that. Um, but my cons my main thing is pragmatism. How do we go? How do we transition from point A to point B? So I am I am not against any eating lifestyle and I'm not against any. You know, I'm certainly not against the morality ethics debate. You know, that's a viable point. Um, and I think we need to, you know, to address it. It's not just, is it a viable? It's certainly a viable point. And it's something everybody, uh, you know, everybody has uh, the freedom right now to decide, you know, where they want to go with that. But how do we certainly transitioning or improving um, let's put it this way. If we're going to go from point A to point B, okay, let's say in a perfect world, um, in a perfect world, let's say veganism, and, and I'm not being dismissive. I'm just saying, let's say in a perfect world, veganism is the end goal. Okay. According to, um, how you see things. And I'm not, I'm not being dismissive with your logic or, or anything. I'm just saying that's the end goal. So how do we get there? is the prag the pragmatic qu the question for me pragmatism how do we get there how do we transition uh and i that's certainly nothing that i am an expert in uh, you know we have we live in a world that is completely fucked uh you know everybody is eating junk food fast food and it's just absolutely chaos chaos so for me my my fight in life is to get people away from that and to get people over to more a plant strong diet. And this is something Robert and I have talked about a lot. We consider ourselves plant strong eaters. Both of us eat probably more fruits and vegetables and, and things than 99% of people we know. Is that fair, Robert? Yeah. I mean, it's like we've talked about it a number of times. That's it's it's a bed of of plant foods and then you've got like a little topping of some kind of animal protein on there so so i mean my fight is to get people more over to that so being pragmatic you know i can't convert people you know i'm i'm not jesus i'm not buddha i'm not whatever but what i can do is help people get healthier and and try to get them to lean that way um so that's my pragmatic solution and, you know, as far as the, uh, the ethics and morals, you know, of, of eating things, you know, that's something obviously every individual has to decide for themselves. Um, but, you know, from, from a pragmatic standpoint, if the end goal is complete veganism, you know, how do we, how do we get people there? It's going to be a process. Would you not, uh, uh, I mean, to, to get people to clean up their diet and not be so reliant on animal products I see benefit in that. I do. I see benefit in it because we're completely out of control as a culture, as consumers in many, many ways, right? Um, so, you know, how do we how do we transition? It's it's a, you know, I don't know. I don't have the answers because things are absolutely fucking chaotic. The way consumerism is out of control, you know, the way, um, uh, you know, convenience, anybody can grub hub whatever they want so i don't have all the answers to that it's a big chaotic mess and you know my battle is helping people one at a time trying to improve and in that process you know yes i'm trying to get people to eat more fruits and vegetables and be you know be less reliant on on crap so uh, i'll just lead with that robert um I'll, I'll let you go from there and add any thoughts to my jumbled mess no, I mean that's that's we're we're pretty much lock and step with a lot of things there, Steve. It's I think 
every individual in their life has their their fight that they want to go and champion or the cause that they want to champion. Uh, yours is trying to you know make you know make people less fat, sick, and unhealthy through you know coaching, muscle building, nutrition, those kind of things. Um, mine is to help educate people on fitness, nutrition, supplements, and those kind of things. Um, I where I guess I'm sh not struggling with certain things is just I'm trying to understand is that. So the way a person eats is is very individualistic choice, and they have they, this is this doesn't apply just to strictly the vegan community or the vegetarian community or the carnivore community. It's it's we we've turned nutrition into this like religious zealotry that I don't understand. Like it's become so the, the sides have dug in. It's just like the American political system. Like you've got the Democrats on one side, the Republicans. There's no common ground where people are coming together to talk and just how do we get people healthy? Why does it have to be all one thing or just all one another? Why isn't there just some kind of good mixture in between where we can kind of all just, hey, you live here or whatever you eat, that's fine. You go and do your thing. If, if I don't feel a certain way, I'm not going to do that. But why do I need to go and, you know, pull you into my line of thinking kind of thing? Why can't we just have the information out there and people can kind of pick and choose and decide what they want to do? I think that's kind of where, where my brain is with, with a lot of the uh, – the debates back and forth that have been on uh, the nutrition side of things. Trisha, before I bounce it back to you, I just want to say, like, when you see, like, these these uh, meat mills, you know, the way things are being processed and handled, um, obviously they're rather disturbing, you know. Um, so, you know, pra from a pragmatic standpoint, how do we move away from that? Uh, how do we move away from that and still be able to maintain, uh, you know, the same level of, um availability of the food that's not something that is in my wheelhouse so i'm i'm open. okay <clears throat> yeah sure so uh if you ch uh, turn to chapter 5 page 76 of the un's latest climate report they actually outline um issues with food supply and uh feeding the world on a purely plant-based diet uh because Animal products require far more land. Uh, they're a lot less uh, space efficient when it comes to providing, uh, you know, a given number of calories per unit of, uh, of land used. So, like, let's say, I, I don't know, 100 square miles of beef. You're not going to be able to provide nearly as much food for a population as 100 square miles of wheat or corn or soy uh, or even fruits and vegetables. So, if uh, so, again, this is outlined in the UN's cli uh, Climate Report, Chapter 5, page 76. If we move to a completely plant-based food supply where no animal products were used at all, we'd be able to feed the population that it, that's expected to exist in 2015 which I think is over 10 billion and uh, we'd actually be able to use less uh, land than we currently use today for agriculture. So uh, switching the entire population over to a plant-based diet, it, it's not a logistical issue when it comes to uh, just providing like food and adequate nutrition for enough people. Uh, it, what the logistical issue is, is basically getting corporations and these food producers to uh, just move, like just change their industry, like rather than killing cows, okay, well now you're gonna you know, grow corn, wheat, soybeans, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, as far as providing adequate amount of food for everyone, that's totally fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of things uh, you both said that I want to respond to. Um, yeah, Steve, uh, one thing that, like, uh, kept ringing in my mind that you said, you're not against any type of diet. Like, you are. If somebody was eating, I, I don't know, whales or dolphins I, or gorillas, I think you'd have a problem with that. And I think you'd certainly have a problem with people eating human beings. So I, I think we are like against certain dietary choices for sure. Uh, I think you do certainly recognize some of the ethical issues with eating meat. Um, you know, you, you mentioned factory farming. 99% of uh, animal agriculture in the U.S. is uh, is factory farmed. So you're talking about only 1% that isn't even factory farmed. And it's this sort of ideal idea we have in our head of like grass fed free range, only 1%. So it's extremely low. And uh, Robert, you mentioned that like you're against this sort of ideological thinking where like, OK, why does everything have to be one way? Like it's vegan or carnivore or low carb or keto. Like, why can't we have a mix? 
So veganism isn't a diet. There's a lot of different ways to eat vegan. Uh, there's vegan ketogenic diets. There's vegan high carb diets. There's like raw fruitarian, which I don't recommend to anyone. And there's more sensible, like balanced vegan diets. And especially now with modern technology, like we have mock meats where, okay, if you want to have a burger, you can have a burger. If you want to have like grilled chicken, you can have vegan grilled chicken. Like there's every option. So I don't think that's an issue when it comes to veganism. The issue that I'm bringing up is that there's clearly an ethical issue with eating meat. Um, so I, I'm not trying to make an argument that like you can only eat one way. There's plenty of ways you can eat. Uh, but I think there's only one way you can actually eat ethically, which is to not consume any animal products. So my challenge to you is name the trait. I don't know if you're familiar with the name the trait argument, but basically it goes like this. Name the trait that is lacking in animals that if lacking in human beings would justify the uh, treating those trait equalized human beings the same way as these animals. So uh, like for instance, I could say, okay, animals are lacking like the trait intelligence or they're lacking sentience or, or some sort of differentiating fact, some sort of trait that's lacking in animals that human beings have. Well, you could hypothetically find human beings that are lacking intelligence or lacking in sentience. So would you be fine with uh, us like killing and eating human beings that are like mentally disabled to the point where maybe they have the cognitive capabilities of like a, a chicken, a cow or a pig? Uh, you know, I, I don't like to eat anybody with a sense of humor. Um, and I don't like to eat anybody without a sense of humor. So I'll establish that. Um, you know, when it comes to discussions like this, um, I will try to wind it back to would our species be here if we didn't eat, uh, meat? Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that's the, I, that's the, no, I'm not done yet. That's a okay. that's a baseline discussion. I mean, um, I mean, that, I'm not being confrontational. I'm just you know asking the question: Would we be here to make this decision if we had not been there? Um, in my culture, where I am from, a lot of people put food on their family, uh, put food on their table uh, to you know by hunting and by fishing. It's 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 um, they're the you know they're the one percent. It's a way to uh, provide for their families. So um, when we dive into ethics and morality, it's it's not a simple you know switch. It's not an either or switch. It's a very complicated uh, discussion. And um, you know, am I going to eat my dog? No, I love my dog. Uh, there's emotional aspects to these things, and that's a reality. Am I going to eat vegan gains? No, he looks a little bit greasy and hairy, a little bit of hot sauce, and maybe maybe the right barbecue. But, you know, all silliness aside, um, there are some, you know, we, we have issues, you know, connectivity with animals. Uh, I just spent a weekend on a farm um, with uh, horses, pigs, ducks, cows, you name it. And you grow, uh, you grow attached to these animals, obviously, emotionally. Um, no one can deny that. There is a detachment uh, that has to be in uh, generally involved. There are some people that hunt, you know, um, that obviously, uh, you know, they respect the animal they're hunting, right? They have some form of reverence. And I, I that's their culture. I get it. I understand what they're doing, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a complicated discussion that is multi, multi, you know, layered. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't come down to intelligence. Um, you know, I, I don't like to boil it down to one simple, you know, one simple thing. It's, it's far more complicated. I'm not going to eat my dog because I love my dog. Um, I'm not going to eat anybody else's dog because culturally I find that disgusting. So someone could call me a hypocrite because I'm okay with eating somebody else's pig, but not my dog. Uh, that's fair enough. That's for other people to judge. But at the end of the day, eat a pig I don't know because it tastes good and because I don't want to die. Um, you know, do I try to eat less pig? Do I try to eat more, uh, uh, you know, plant-based foods? 
I certainly have, especially since I nearly died from, you know, abusing food. But, um, you know, the ethics and morality and, you know, it's not just who is it, if, if something's intelligent or unintelligent, should we eat it? I mean, Robert, when uh, I was with Tiger Fitness, we had indications that plants um, could sense, uh, um, plants could sense, you know, some form of, I don't know, when you tore off a root or some shit, they reacted somehow biomechanically, you know, uh, they're able to sense it. So how far do we go with that? You know, these are all very complicated discussions that obviously need to occur, but I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I have no issue with it. Complicated. Uh, I have no issue with, with eating, uh, you know, something, um, you know, it's, it's not going to come down to level of intelligence or some random marker. How, how, you know, how is their sense of humor? You know, a lot of it comes down to emotional attachment or detachment. And I think we could all agree on that. It's much easier to, uh, consume something when you have no emotional attachment to it. Is that fair? Oh, did, uh, I, I don't know if I should go or if Robert wanted to yeah, respond. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Okay. Yeah, so a uh, number of things to say there. Uh, first of all, you didn't answer my name, the trait question. Uh, like, you you can't, like, I'd, I'd prefer you to answer it. Like, name the trait that's lacking in animals that if lacking in trait uh, equalized human beings would justify killing and eating those trait equalized human beings. I think it's a so, non-question. Uh, I, I didn't answer because it's a non-question. It's not trait-based. It's not a non-question. No, I answered it. In, here's how I answered it. I answered it by saying I don't believe it's it's uh, I, I believe it's more of an emotional or non emotional attachment. Um, oh, okay. So I uh, all right. I believe, and I'm not being confrontational. What I believe for the average individual, um, what I believe for the average individual is the trait or whatever is emotional or non emotional attachment. Okay. People aren't going to eat their dog. Um, okay. Right. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Eat their okay. Mom, but they're going to eat Herbie the pig if they've never met Herbie the pig because Herbie the pig you know served up as a in a nice little plastic you know container so um, I'm not being dismissive of your of your question I, I simply believe that that's the key issue for most people okay that? well okay well I, I I think I misunderstood then I think the trait would be emotional attachment then essentially whether or not somebody has an emotional attachment so okay uh, if I don't have an emotional attachment to you or anyone else does it make it justified to kill and eat you or any other you, human being you didn't come try to kill and eat me uh, okay well I'm just saying like if, <laughs> no, because, if the trait because, is emotional attachment because, uh, yeah our level of uh, you know there is you know, we we have evolved as a society uh, of rules and laws uh, for what. And I didn't make this up and neither did you. But that's where we are. So I can't kill you. and You can't kill me without repercussions. So, um, you know, the, the society as a society of rules and laws has determined uh, there is a method to kill and eat a pig. But there is no method to kill and eat a human that that is against the law. So. Okay, that's another trait then. Okay, so okay, that's not necessarily another trait, uh, but okay. So now it is emotional attachment and essentially societal consequence. So uh, you're saying because of societal consequences of killing and eating another human being, uh, it's wrong to kill and eat another human being. No, I would never say that. Uh, I, I would never say it's it's right to kill and eat a human being because I find it repulsive. And um, we, we find it. Well, suppose you didn't. OK, well, suppose well, you didn't. <laughs> There's no suppose you didn't. It's built into us uh, unless somebody's, you know, emotional. no, it's not built into us. There have been plenty baseball. of cultures all throughout history that have practiced cannibalism. No, don't, don't, yeah, people practice cannibalism. But in modern culture, uh, we do not practice cannibalism. Uh, you know, there are some fringe people like Jeffrey Dahmer that might. But it's not part of our culture. It's not part of who we are. Um, okay, okay, well, uh, let me ask you, do you think we should be logically consistent? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, it depends, trying to throw out uh, things like that, um, you know, should we be logically consistent? Yes, we should be logically consistent. 
Um, but that doesn't involve eating my dad. O okay, well, if you believe we should be logically cons consistent, then don't you see it as a contradiction to claim that we should be able to eat animals, but then you can't actually name a trait for why we shouldn't be able to eat animals, but you know we shouldn't uh, be able to eat trait equalized human beings. Uh, emotional attachment. Right, and we already went over that. So suppose you don't have an emotional attachment to a human being, or maybe a particular group of human beings, like uh, the Nazis had with the Jews. Uh, does that make it ethical to like for Nazis to like exterminate the Jews because they didn't have an emotional attachment? Uh, these these discussions are just getting silly. I mean, it's no, it's not getting silly. Like you 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 admitted yourself that we should be logically consistent. So if that results in a logical inconsistency, doesn't that mean you should change some of your beliefs? Uh, I'm 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 going to continue to eat pigs, and you can judge me. I'm going to continue to eat cows, and you can judge me. I'm not going to eat my mom. I'm not going to get into silly discussions about whether we sh logical consistency. Whether, yeah, I understand what you're doing. I really do, and and I get it. Um, but it's not real world. You know, we're we're spending time trying to discuss whether we should eat our mom or dad, and. And, uh, you know, we're wasting time here. What, the, what I, I'm not, okay, just, just, don't, just over -talk, don't over talk me. I'm not done. This has value to having people transition over. If you truly believe that, and I do, that there is a better way, there is a, a way forward, wasting time on trying to discuss whether we should eat our mom or not eat our mom, that's a fool's, that's a fool's path. And you're taking a fool's path and you can continue to take that fool's path but that adds no practical or pragmatic value to getting people from point a to point b and you can continue to you know you can continue to try to walk down that path but i have no interest because um you know it it's it's not it's not like that in the real world and it adds no value to where we're going um, if we want to discuss, you know, how we can uh, move forward, you know, if that's truly where you're at, I did not say I'm not against you, right? So let's establish that. The point I was trying to make is how do we get there? How do we get there and how do we transition? Because we have a mountain before us and that are people eating crap foods, um, people abusing consumerism. So do I see value in trying to improve or transition? Absolutely. But I'm not going to entertain, you know, discussion, waste my personal time. I'm, I'm not I'm not attacking you. I'm just telling you I'm not going to waste my personal time entertaining discussions uh, uh, in a fairy tale world about whether I should eat my mom or not. Because right now I'm working with people that are eating themselves to death. And I'm trying to figure out how to save their life and maybe help them transition a little bit more into your world. So that's where I leave uh, my that's where I leave, you know, my my load. That's that's where I dump my load right there. I, I am I'm nothing against these logical discussions or debates. I don't have time for them. I'm fucking 53 years old. I'm trying to help people save their lives. And I would argue that I'm doing more to help people transition than you are because I'm in the trenches helping people try to transition to a more vegan friendly uh, way of eating. And I'm not going to I'm I'm not going to entertain discussions about whether I should eat uh, my neighbor's poodle because whether you want to admit it or not, they're ridiculous, they're ridiculous paths. They're ridiculous places to go because we do not do that. Is it, uh, is it intelligent? Is it consistent uh, from a logical standpoint that because I don't want to eat my poodle um, that I shouldn't eat a pig? Yes, I get what you're saying. I absolutely do. But I want to know pragmatically what can we do to help people get there. If you want to see people eat fewer pigs, I get it. I certainly do. I have nothing against that nothing at all but you know i don't want to waste my time talking about my mom so okay um i can respond to that if you'd let me 
Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, I think it's a mischaracterization to claim that I'm talking about eating people's moms. Uh, no, what I'm talking about is whether or not it's ethical to consume animal products. And I'm giving, uh, I'm using these hypothetical examples of whether or not you'd eat your mom or another human being or somebody's poodle to test logical consistency. And so far, you've admitted that you're not logically consistent. So, yes. Steve, like, if you're going to admit you're not logically consistent, then do you also admit that you have no moral grounds to consume animal products? Um, I like bacon. I'm going to continue to eat it. I mean, okay. Okay. Well, it's a yes or no question. Would, would you admit that you have no moral grounds to consume animal products? Uh, I have the freedom to consume animal products. Okay. And we've had the freedom to keep slaves in the past. Uh, we've had the freedom to exterminate other races. Freedom has nothing to do with it. Freedom has nothing to do with this. Look, freedom has nothing to do with whether or not you have moral grounds to do something. Consistency. Equating, equating that to keeping slaves. I mean, logic, you need to stay in the logic lane and have something at least parallel. That's ridiculous. Okay, Steve, you've admitted to not being logically consistent. I, I just want to hear you admit that you don't have any moral grounds to consume animal products. I don't have any moral grounds? Yeah, right. Since you cannot, since you have no logically consistent basis to like to claim, okay, well, animals are unique in some sort of way where I can treat them this way versus, I don't know, people or even other animals. Like you admitted, like you wouldn't be comfortable with eating uh, pets like dogs, but you would be fine with eating animals like pigs. So if you have no logically consistent grounds to separate animal like animals that you eat versus other animals or other human beings, then yeah, you would have no moral grounds to consume animal products, correct? No, I do have a moral ground. I'm very attached to my dog. Okay, but we've already been over this. And then when I bring up hypothetical examples that test that uh, sort of ethical view you have where, okay, if I don't have a moral attachment to something, then, you know, it's okay to uh, kill something. Yes. And, th and then you just accuse me of making an absurd claim, which, no, yeah, it, it's I testing mean, logical yeah, consistency. Plans, but if How I, is that absurd? If I don't have an emotional attachment to something... Um, you know, and obviously, if we're talking about real world examples, like not eating your mom, if it's a pig or a cow, I'm going to eat it. OK, well, Steve, you're the one who flat out admits you're not being logically consistent. So how am I making an absurd claim? Uh, you're trying you're bringing in issues like slavery, um, you know, like eating other people. These are these are what value, Richard, does this add people over to a vegan diet? What value you you want to you want? Well, I think an ethical argument, argument is extremely powerful for encouraging somebody to go to a, a vegan diet. Why wouldn't it be? Asking people if they shouldn't eat their mom is going to help somebody. That's a mischaracterization. If, if okay, well, that's an, a mischaracterization. You know, who has a binge eating problem? That's going to help them transition over. That's going to win a debate for veganism. That's that's nonsense. That's not. I, I I think an ethical motivator is an extremely powerful motivator. If somebody doesn't want to commit harm against uh, innocent animals, yeah, that's an extremely powerful motivator for some people. For a very small percentage of people, but we live in. A I, I wouldn't say it's small. Uh, I would say it's small because I coach for a living and I know uh, the issues people struggle with. You're you're in a fairy tale world where you're dealing with concepts and ideas. I'm in a world where I deal with people and real. Okay, well, Steve, stuff. Steve, like I, I don't like the like I don't like your sort of word choice where you're telling telling me I live in a fairy tale world. Well, I don't Steve, really you care. admit you flat out admit to being logically inconsistent. I, look, you do live in a like fairy who's living tale. in a fairy tale fairy tale you world do, because I deal I deal with people on a daily basis, and I'm in the trenches trying to help them improve their eating. These people are not uh, switches, right? They have a lot to consider. Life is very, very difficult. We'll all agree on that point. Life is extremely difficult, extremely difficult. Uh, people have, all of us have a unique set of challenges. All of us have uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of struggles. People come, uh, people honestly want to eat better. They honestly want to improve their life. But this discussion of these, these areas that we're going into, in the real world, 
where 94% of people can't transition over to a new life, a sustainable lifestyle, right? It has no value for the average, very little value for the average person other than the person that it does connect with. There's going to be some people that it does connect with. Okay. There are some clients that I work with where the, the switch is flipped. And I would argue that we can't predict what is going to flip that switch for that individual, right? Okay, sure. I'd agree with that. Um, like Steve, some, some people have other priorities, like maybe they care more about their health and ethics, but that's tangential to whether or not eating animal products is ethical. And again, like I, I'd ask you, why does somebody's, uh, I don't know, personal preferences or personal goals when it comes to diet and nutrition, uh, why is that more valuable than the suffering and death of animals? Uh, again, you, you, wouldn't, you weren't even able to name a differentiating trait between humans and animals. So I don't see how you can can say uh, trait. We have governments. They do not. OK, so if we found a people that didn't have a government, like, I don't know, uncontacted tribes, I'm people, would it be ridiculous discussions? No. This OK. Fairy tale. Work. OK, Steve, Steve, You're it, it, like again, Steve, tale, Lord, these are fairy your fairy principles. Fairy. Steve, these are your <laughs> moral <laughs> principles. These are your moral principles that you're criticizing and calling ridiculous. You realize that, Richard, if I find a culture that doesn't have a government, we are going to eat them. Oh, okay, so like the North Sentinelese, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of uncontacted tribes people in the Amazon that don't have government. Uh, there's feral children. <laughs> like, Steve, these are your own moral principles. I want you to, to recognize that. Like, you're the one saying that, okay, yeah, lack of emotional attachment is what makes it. Well, look, Steve, Steve, like, I, I, I allow you to talk, so I just, like, appreciate it if you give me the time to talk. So, like, these are your moral principles that you're espousing. Like, you're the one who told me that lack of emotional attachment is what makes it okay for you to kill, kill any animals. Uh, you're the one who said, okay, uh, the, the lack of a government is, is what makes it okay to uh, kill and eat animals. If I find a hypothetical situation that you're not comfortable with, you know, still following with your moral values, that is only proving that your moral values are ridiculous. I'm not the one being ridiculous. No, you're the one being what ridiculous. It, what it's doing is showing your lack of logical intelligence because you're trying to take one thing and turn it into a black and white case for everything. And that's logically juvenile, Richard. That's 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 insane. You cannot take black or white. If you want to talk about logic, Richard, you cannot take a black or white case and try to apply it in all cases, in all scenarios. If you want to talk about logic, that is shitty juvenile logic. I'm going to step back for a minute and let uh, I'd like Robert to jump in and and uh, and have a few words. Yeah, sure. He's been quiet for a while. I, take a, I have nothing. Against, look, Richard, I have nothing against you. And when we have heated discussions, this is good for people that are watching, because I think in most cases we agree that there needs to be improvements and transitions, and we both want to help people. So, in that sense, you know, I do not want to turn this into uh, yeah, we're going to get heated. Ab absolutely. But, um, you know, I want people to understand, I think we're on the same sheet of music. In most cases, we're just going about it differently. I do not want to discuss logic. What I want to discuss is practice. You know, you can go out here and not talk about this stuff, but it's not going to convert people. We need more pragmatic solutions. So, Robert, I'm going to step back just for a minute. Yeah, um, I think that's where I'd like to maybe direct the conversation to, because I think getting into one person's morals versus ethical debates, and I don't think that's doing better for the end users, it's people that are tuning in to watch this, or people that are going to tune in after after our conversation is done. I think what might serve them better is to you know, we, we want to start incorporating more plant foods into the diet. So, you know, Richard, maybe you can give some tips for people on how can they start if they're eating already a bunch of crap food or they're eating some of these Franken food, vegan foods like the Impossible Burger, or like the, the chicken patties that you were referencing earlier. You know, that that's if we're that's that's being, I think, disingenuous to what the, the vegan lifestyle is and what like being plant food, like eating minimally processed, really good, high quality whole foods, not not some just because it's vegan certified, it's got 47 different ingredients in it and a bunch of fillers, stabilizers and all that stuff. So that's not what it's, it's good. We're trying to get people eating 
more healthy foods because they're shitty hyper processed foods, they're shitty carnivore foods, they're shitty vegan foods. So like what steps, like what practical takeaways and tips can you help the average individual get to start getting away from the bullshit food and start incorporating more whole foods and more real foods in their diet? I think that's where would be would be more productive for our, all of us here. Sure. Okay. So uh, for one thing, I wouldn't necessarily say uh, processed foods are inherently bad for you. Like, I mean, protein powder is not bad for you. Um, at least if you're like moderating, uh, you know, oil, like cooking oil, like I, I don't know, olive oil it isn't bad for you. Um, and uh, some of these mock meats, uh, like I, I would recommend avoiding uh, the Beyond Meat, like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. That those are kind of kind of like junk, kind of junky, uh, primarily because of the saturated fat content. Um, it, it contains coconut oil, which will raise your LDL. But uh, other other uh, plant based alternatives, like um, I don't know, Gardein chicken. The only real issue with that is just the sodium content. So if you're kind of watching your blood pressure and your sodium intake, that's a bit of an issue. But if that's not a problem for you, I wouldn't say that's necessarily a junk food. Uh, I'd just say because of the sodium, maybe it has to be moderated a bit. So I, I don't see how eating some of these processed foods is necessarily a bad thing. And I mean, I, I see you sell creatine, D3, K2, multivitamin supplements on your website. Like those are processed, but you wouldn't call those bad for you. No. Um, but if you want to incorporate more plant-based foods, um, and if or if you just want to like hop right into a vegan diet, um, there's challenge22.com. They can set you up with a registered dietitian and they can make you a customized vegan meal plan for free. So if you're totally lost and you want to jump into a vegan diet right away, that's a great resource. Um, I would say like uh, most people, they'd probably benefit from just signing up to Chronometer uh, and you know maybe switch one meal at a time to a plant-based meal. And you can look up uh, different recipes. You can look up different foods with nutrients that you're kind of interested in consuming, like a certain amount of protein, carbohydrates, maybe micronutrients like iron. And uh, you know, just plug some of these numbers into Chronometer. Uh, maybe find some foods that are high and like like construct a meal that way. Uh, that's a really uh, good way to adopt a plant-based diet. But like, if we, I think we all have the same goal here, where uh, I think we would all be interested in reducing the suffering and death of animals, and I think we're all interested in having people live healthier, longer lives. I mean, look, uh, look at the Adventist Health Studies. Look at the Oxford Vegetarian Cohort that's going on right now. Vegans and vegetarians lived the longest and they had the lowest risk of chronic disease. So I think, uh, you know, I think we should all be recommending a fully plant-based diet if we're like our main concern is health. I think uh, another benefit too, like uh, Robert, you talked earlier how you don't like to be restrictive. I think a vegan diet is kind of a good mix of being restrictive, but allowing for a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, you can eat any macronutrient ratio you want. You can be like a you know low carb keto as a vegan. You can be like high carb. You can eat high protein. You can eat a mix of everything. And there's so many different varieties of plant foods. Um, but it also restricts you from eating like a lot of junk. Like you can't go to McDonald's and eat everything on the menu. You can't just walk down the grocery aisle and just pick up every Hershey chocolate bar. So I think uh, that might be one of the benefits of a vegan diet where, you know, if you follow it strictly, um, it gives you a ton of flexibility with like plenty of healthy options that also taste good, but you can't like just stuff your face with, you know, complete bullshit. Agreed. Um... I guess a, a few of the, the pitfalls, not pitfalls, but some of the, the bumps that may, that we, that are kind of everybody knows about with regards to the, the vegan or plant-based diets, like there's certain nutrient deficiencies. And so what do you, what steps do you take to avoid a few of these? Like B12 are common ones, you know, low iron, maybe some of those uh, omega-3 um, fatty acids, just because like the, we, we know there's non-heme <clears> iron in spinach and a couple of the dark green vegetables uh, and beans, legumes and all of that stuff. But do you, are these... Do you have to micromanage your micronutrient intake to a any specific degree, B12 intake, for instance, or uh, EPA, DHA levels, just because the conversion from ALA to EPA in the body is so inefficient? Right. Uh, so as far as iron goes, uh, vegans and vegetarians actually don't have a lower risk of iron deficiency, um, especially like men. It's just not something you really have to worry about. 
Um, women, they like they menstruate, so they they lose more iron, like they lose more iron just because they bleed more. But yeah. uh, even among women, uh, it, it's there still isn't a high risk of iron deficiency anemia uh, with vegans and vegetarians. Uh, some people do need to consume more iron, and some people do have iron absorption issues. And for those people, I'd recommend. Uh, one, eating a lot of high iron foods, so uh, like red lentils, kidney beans, black beans, really high iron foods. Uh, eating it with garlic, onions, and uh, high vitamin C fruits or vegetables, so like broccoli, potatoes, um, you know, f like uh, citrus fruits, helps with iron absorption. And you probably also want to avoid uh, significant calcium intake around those meals because calcium inhibits iron absorption. As far as EPA and DHA, uh, it seems that you actually make metabolic adaptations if you're not consuming uh, like pure EPA, DHA, and you're just getting a ALA. Uh, the EPA and DHA concentrations in vegans, like the serum concentrations, they, they're they about equivalent to um, like uh, people on an omnivorous diet who don't consume significant amounts of fish. Um, if you up your ALA intake, uh, like eat more flax seeds, walnuts, uh, then chances are your EPA, DHA intake will, or sorry, your circulating levels of EPA, DHA will increase. You can take an LG-based D, uh, DHA supplement if you so choose, but I haven't actually seen any benefit to taking any of those supplements. Uh, vegans have like the lowest risk of heart disease to begin with. Uh, they, uh, as far as like cognitive issues, vegans don't have any increased risk in like cognitive decline with aging. So I, I don't see really, uh, I don't see it as a necessary supplement. Uh, I would recommend everyone supplement B12 though. Uh, recently, I think there was a study out of Switzerland which uh, found vegans didn't have any increased risk of vitamin B12 deficiency, but that's because pretty much everyone was supplementing. So that's a supplement I'd, tell, I'd say everyone should take. And uh, vitamin D. I'd say B12 and vitamin D are two absolutely necessary ones. Uh, vitamin D for everyone, not just vegans, by the way. Uh, pretty much everyone who lives in like North America, colder climates, you're you're going to be vitamin D deficient uh, if you don't take a supplement. Vitamin D deficiency rates are extremely high. Uh, there's not many reliable food sources of vitamin D, so just take a supplement. Yeah. Um, and I know you do keep up to the research. I mean, you mentioned a few studies thus far. There's a couple that I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on. Um, the first one, you said that vegetarians don't really necessarily have lower iron stores. There was a, a 2017 meta-analysis that said vegetarians compared to non-vegetarians typically have lower iron stores, but you know, even... even no, uh, I didn't say they have lower iron stores. I said their risk of uh, iron deficiency anemia it isn't increased. So there's a difference between having lower iron and being deficient. Right. Yeah, I think on average, uh, vegans, vegetarians tend to have lower iron, but it's not deficient. Okay. Um, yeah. And then there was one, uh, a 2020 meta-analysis that showed a link between avoidance of meat and, uh, here I'll read the, it said higher rates of avoided meat consumption had significantly higher rates of depression, anxiety, and or self-harm behaviors. And the, the study's authors concluded that our study does not support meat avoidance as a strategy to benefit psychological health. Discussing, um, like we were discussing like, psychology and the average individual like the average individual right now for better or for worse from the moment they get up to the moment they go to sleep there's so many connection points with social media and billboards and friends and whatever telling them what to do what to be so i think one of the points i was trying to bring up or your thoughts on this is with that in mind you know, when somebody explains like the ethical reasons for a vegan diet um, and you take that to the person that's being told nonstop every day all the time, you know, that they should be this, that or the other thing. It, uh, would it be fair to say that it's much easier in the modern landscape for that to be to get clouded or to feel like just another case of you got to be this? No, um, I think uh, veganism is kind of unique because um, it, it's not really about an identity. I, I don't think it's really necessarily about, um, it, well, it's certainly not. It's about helping others. It, it's not, um, I don't know, something to look cool or benefit yourself. It's, it's an ethical principle where you're trying to help others. So um, I think everyone can kind of uh, identify with that and uh, support that sort of ideology. Uh, and I think just... Almost universally, universally, 
everyone cares about animals. Like nobody wants to see animals get hurt. So I, I think that also just kind of um, relates to everyone, pra like pretty much universally, unless I don't know you're an asshole and you're you're fine with seeing animals get harmed. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, I would tend to get, disagree with that because I think a lot of people just boil it down to, to food choices. But that's just my opinion, Robert. I mean, what is what is your thoughts? Do you do you think when when we're talking about this sort of lifestyle that it's just it's viewed by the average person as just another lifestyle option, or uh, you know, they like they feel pressured to to go a hundred different ways in life? What's what's your view on it? Yeah, but I think I think a lot of that is it's brought on yourself. It's staying tuned into social media. It's it's sitting on your phone and scrolling through it for hours and hours a day. Or every time you have ten or fifteen minutes, you immediately jump onto it. And which is why you know I don't keep that stuff on my phone. I've never really been like Facebook came out when I was a sophomore in college. I jumped on it because it was kind of cool and a way for me to connect with other people at the universities. And then. It started getting weird a couple of years ago when, like, my grandma and and my wife's grandma were saying, "Oh, well, I just sent you a friend request on Facebook. Did you see that video?" And like, that's the only way people can relate these days. You go out to a restaurant, you got four people at a table. They're all faces are right in their phones instead of interacting with each other. And so people are trying to get how they should live their lives or what they should do from this little box that's run on an algorithm to keep you focused into it. And all it's doing is compounding your stress. It's not actually bringing enrichment to your life. It's bringing more stresses and more confusion, more uh, conflicting bits of information a lot of the times which are oversimplified or overly reductive um, so I think a lot of the stress that people are feeling these days it's it's self brought on them and if they would just kind of unplug and I realize the irony of me saying this on YouTube while people are watching us and have this discussion but at the same time you've got to we've got to get detached from some from this technology bullshit you know get out go enjoy nature go read a book do something else uh, just don't don't live and die by what uh, your favorite Instagram influencer is saying or, or advocating this week or this month. Well, I think the mental health issue after the last year is a is a big part of things. And um, sorry, my wife just popped in. What's up? Oh, we're back. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, Fiona. Oh, a quick hello. Yeah, Bubba, hello. say hi to Bubba. Hello. <laughs> Did Fiona lose weight? Her face looks thin, thinner. No, I just shaved. It makes everybody else look <laughs> When I was shaved, go. people think I'm fucking 70 years old. So I shaved. She looks younger. I don't know. The mental health issues are, are a big part of things, So I, uh, you know, especially after the last year. But that's, that's, uh, that's down a, a rabbit trail. So, all right. So where should we go from here? I've already... Uh, who keeps trying? Why do I keep getting devices trying to uh, connect to the studio? Where the fuck did people get access to the link? Uh, that's never happened before. Um, where do we go from here, uh, Richard? Anything you'd like to talk about or uh, you know continue to uh, discuss? Well, uh, well, before I got like my computer crashed, uh, Rob was asking me about that study on uh, like I, I don't know meat avoidance being associated with. Uh, like mental illness I don't know um, like it depends like on the study population like I know a lot of anorexics kind of naturally avoid a lot of animal products because they tend to be higher in calories like there could be crossover with that um, I, I have no idea like it's, it's interesting finding but uh, I'd rather see a study on like actual vegans like ethical vegans and not just like meat avoidance, there's no mechanism or reason why I'd, I'd think that, I don't know, not eating meat uh, would make you go mentally ill. I, I, I guess the, the point I was raising, Steve, was that do you think it's more of like a, a psychological burden? So maybe that's why. Like you have this, this whether consciously or subconsciously, you've got this weight on your head saying, I can't eat meat or I'm not going to allow myself to eat meat. And maybe that's playing into why you're feeling more stressed, feeling more anxious or having higher rates of depression is that – and that kind of goes back to the, the point where I was going in, back in the beginning. It's like we need to remove barriers to try to get people to start eating healthier and being more fit, not add other little hurdles to it in, in whatever ways we, we're doing, whatever kind of construct or diet or lifestyle you want to follow. If I can make a small point, I mean, I think if you took any of us and told us that we had to remove some aspect from our diet, there would be some level of stress. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, I think that's like restrictivity is one of those traits. That's why it's why – uh, so many diets fail is that pe when people start to feel restricted, 
then they're going to start to get those cravings or be, you know, feel more stress. And then that's what's eventually going to lead them to jump off the bandwagon and then jump back on it. You know, right. and obviously that's not a, an argument uh, against veganism. No, I think no, that's it's, it's restrict any restrictive diet in general. I mean, I would say the same thing about like ultra low fat diets or, or keto diets, carnivore diets, any, you know, paleo diets. That's why I, I kind of come back to the thing of eat a wide variety of foods that are really good, nutritious for you, cut out as much bullshit. You can have a little bullshit. I mean, I have bourbon every now and then. I have junk food every now and then. But just, like, cut out as much of the bullshit as possible, and then you, you can sprinkle in some of it. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. I, you know, what I would like to, um, you know, discuss is where, where – when you talk to vegans, you know, where – where are they looking for the next step? I mean, what is what is the next progression for, uh, you know, for meat product like all these meat production plants? You know, all these uh, the state of the way meat production is right now. What is the next step? What would vegans like to see? Because um, obviously, we're not going to unplug or change an industry. So where is the war being fought right now? I guess that's the question. You know, if, if we could educate some non-vegans um, that might be against these types of, you know, food mills, uh, where is the war being fought? What changes are, are they trying to enact on the, on the ground, on, on an actual battlefield? Okay, um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Like, you mean vegan activism, like what the focus is right now? Um, like, yeah, is that what it, you're asking? So, like, you know, these these meat mills, right? You, you sure. know a lot more about them than I do. So where do we, you know, where's the transition point? How do you go from meat mills uh, to, uh, you know, transitioning a culture over to, uh, transitioning a culture over to a more uh, plant-focused lifestyle, because obviously it's it is a fairy tale to pretend that we will ever all eat plants. Um, that'll n unlikely to happen in the next two hundred years, right? So no, I think it's extremely likely. Um, so right now, uh, as far as uh, activism is concerned. Uh, there are a few legal battles going on with uh, trying to remove some of these uh, animal egg gag laws where uh, like it's basically um, stopping activists from breaking into some of these farmhouses, taking videos, things like that. Uh, uh, it, it's preventing that sort of surveillance on any kind of agricultural property. There are some uh, legal battles going on right now to remove those ag gag laws because it also interferes with some other free speech laws when it comes to whistleblowing. So that's some stuff that activists are doing right now. But as far as transitioning, like, uh, I, I don't know, like a, a corporation who, you know, runs factory farms to, you know, uh, providing plant based alternatives. Uh, right now, just because of the cultural shift that's going on to more plant-based eating, there's a lot of companies that are actually just uh, either uh, adding plant-based diets to their uh, options or they've completely transitioned over where they're only providing plant-based options. Uh, we're seeing that happen very quickly with the dairy industry. Uh, there's actually been a few dairy companies that have switched over to just producing like almond and soy milk because dairy is kind of going downhill and plant-based milk alternatives are going up. So it's just a smart financial decision. I've also seen uh, some chicken producers actually end up uh, producing plant-based chicken because again, it's just another market that's growing and it makes sense. The trend's going in that direction. Um, I know uh, the company Field Roast and maybe a few others, uh, they've actually been acquired. I think they were acquired by Maple Leaf's food, Maple Leaf Foods, which are like a big chicken producer. Um, and uh, there's also lab-grown meat. Lab-grown meat is right on the horizon. Uh, right now, there's two companies that are really, really close to actually uh, releasing. Uh, one of them is, I think they're still called 
super meat. Uh, they had an Indiegogo campaign a while ago where they were developing a technology to infinitely grow a cell line. So what they can do is just take a small muscle biopsy and just grow it infinitely to like produce like an infinite amount of meat. Um, right now, like uh, they're a company out of Israel, and uh, right now they're just still testing the product, refining it, trying to alter the taste and everything. But uh, we'll probably see that come out in like the next few years, and um, then after that, um, I'm I'm assuming once it becomes like widely adopted and more and more economically vi uh, viable, I don't see uh, factory farming and slaughterhouses existing for too too much longer. If uh, these sort of lab grown meats are cheaper to produce, taste just as good, um, I I'm sure there's going to be a large market of people who are interested in it because. They don't want to harm animals, and uh, it's probably also going to be better for the environment. So I wouldn't be surprised too uh, once these sorts of products come out that uh, legislation starts getting passed to just outright ban uh, animal farming. Yeah, I don't can we see... trust the lab-grown meat? Though I mean, like we're not going to have any longitudinal studies. I mean, it'd be kind of the same thing as like it's the same thing. It's identical. It's bioidentical and everything. Yeah, and all this. Yep. Stuff? Yep. That's, that's it. I mean. My knee jerk is to say that's a huge assumption. I mean, I've obviously not looked at it, but uh, my knee jerk is to say that that that's a huge stress without stretch without looking at the science. Um, you know, and I apologize. I'm a little bit distracted. We have had a couple people try to log on. I'm not sure where they would have gotten the the share link from. But um, you know, you say you mentioned the point that you believe in 200 years. It's reasonable for to believe that we would have transitioned away from meat um i find that you know looking at human history to be uh pretty much a, a pretty big stretch but that's my you know that's just my you know knee-jerk reaction why do you believe that's so well look at it this way uh, i mean slavery has existed for how long like you're talking about thousands and thousands of years in human history and like only relatively recently has it been abolished um i don't see why we can't uh look at like eating meat the same way i mean it's existed for so long i think it's overdue to uh end up getting abolished and since we're uh, just now developing these sorts of technologies to get rid of uh, animal agriculture, uh, I don't see how it's unreasonable to assume that yeah, within a few decades or like your time span, 200 years especially, I think it's totally reasonable to assume within 200 years we're going to get rid of animal ag. But would that have some kind of disruptive effects on the, the greater ecosystems of the planet? Like if we've gotten accustomed for a couple of hundred years to having certain quantities of animals around. Is that going to have some kind of disruptive force if, you know, where we gradually phase well, out, you know, animal agriculture? Yes. Yeah. So animal agriculture is extraordinarily disruptive to the environment. Uh, cattle farming is the number one cause of deforestation. Animal agriculture is the number one cause of species extinction and lack of biodiversity. Um, it is a primary driver of uh, CO2, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions leave 15% uh, of anthropocentric uh, greenhouse gas emissions are attributable to animal agriculture. Um, it does end up, uh, you know, polluting, uh, causing like water and air pollution. So no, uh, if anything, getting rid of animal agriculture and moving to these sorts of uh, mock meats or uh, lab grown meat, if anything, it would be uh, good for the environment. All right, fair enough. I was just checking a few things. So um, I'm going to return it back to you, Richard, and, uh, you know, let you, uh, you know, jump in here and anything else you would like to discuss. Well, um, I, I don't know if you're comfortable with doing it. Like, if you're, it's your show, right? So if you're uninterested, I'd like to maybe continue uh, talking about ethics because I think we have some unresolved differences there. But if you're not interested. Well, it's not that I'm not, I mean, you know, we're sitting at a bar, you know, we'll, we'll discuss ethics. But the, my main issue with ethics is, you know, um, do we believe all of us that there are things that we need to improve obviously um you know from a pragmatic standpoint do i believe you know these types of discussions uh benefit the average individual no because i believe the average individual is looking for more 
pragmatic or more reasons. I mean, we're, we're selfish in the sense that for something to have value, it has, you know, it has to benefit us, right? So bacon benefits me because it tastes happy, it brings joy in my life. And I'm not just being a smart ass, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that's the way the average individual is saying, thinking, right? Um, you know, if, if we start to talk about ethics, you know, people sometimes I, I think people are more like, what is this going to benefit me? You know, okay. what, what is this discussion going to benefit me? And I think that's a fair, that's a, that's a fair question. Okay, sure. I think these ethical discussions certainly do benefit us. Um, if like, let's say we lived in a culture where it was common to, uh, eat dogs, would you say it would benefit us to look at dogs as companions and creatures that are deserving of love, care, and attention that can also help enrich our lives, that we can spend time with and play with and learn to be, you know, better, more caring individuals? Uh, I think that would certainly benefit us. And I think that's one of the reasons why these sort of ethical discussions are valuable. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But the problem is humanity. I mean, you know, we when you look at the broad landscape of humanity um people cultures come up with different concepts of what is normal not normal um okay not okay so if some cultures eat dogs uh you know that's developed over their culture through whatever you know uh, through whatever means um so we have differences even in cultures over what is considered you know, ethical and not ethical. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, but uh, I think we should also consider context. Um, like one of the reasons why it's okay to eat dogs in China is partly because of uh, communism. There were mass food shortages, millions of people died due to starvation. And one of the reasons China has this absurd culture with food where they literally eat anything uh, like bats, uh, just weird creatures, like all these weird creatures it's because they've come from a culture where there's all these food shortages and uh, millions of people dying and then yeah they just look at every animal as a food source but um, I, I I don't think that's a healthy way of looking at things uh, you know considering the change in their culture recently where they don't have that problem uh, I don't think they should keep consuming uh, you know these sorts of animals especially with the recent pandemic uh, you know like uh, we could have avoided a whole pandemic here if uh, China ate a plant-based diet if they didn't have this ridiculous culture with meat eating uh you know history will always repeat itself i mean how do you stop history history from perpetuating the wheel that it's spinning on um i think by having these sorts of ethical standards like i like again we've abolished slavery in the in the western world uh like are you gonna are you like trying to argue that you know, history is going to repeat itself. Like, should we not have these sort of ethical standards for you well, know, preventing you're, slavery? We're having your ethical <clears throat> standards. No, I, I think you share my ethical standard where we shouldn't have slavery, correct? Well, we're not, let's not talk about slavery. I mean, for the love of fucking God, let's not go down silly roads. I mean, let's talk about... Um, Okay, okay. Well, Steve, I, I just want to I just want to bring this up because I think you're misunderstanding like the hypothetical examples I give. Um, when I when I bring up something like slavery or eating a dog or something like that, I'm not discussing eating a dog. What I'm doing here is I'm challenging your logical consistency. Like I'm challenging whether or not you actually believe in some of these moral principles you're talking about. Like if you were to claim, um, I don't know, I, I love, um, I, I don't know, I love my one son over, like, or sorry, I love my one son just as much as my other son. Um, but like we set up like a trolley situation where, okay, like uh, if there was a train coming and there were like two sets of tracks and you had to ch like, to pull a switch on the track, like which son would you save? Like, would you just say, oh, I wouldn't pull anything because, you know, one son, like I love them equally, so one of them dying would be just as bad, or would you actually have a preference? Like these sorts of hypothetical situations, 
they might be ridiculous. Like, I mean, there's plenty of ways where we could po poke holes in like the trolley situation, which I'm sure you've heard of before, where, OK, well, how come you're like, why is there no conductor here? Why can't the train stop beforehand if they see something, you know, coming? Like, how come you're in control of the switch? Like, how did your children get there on the tracks? Like, there's plenty of ways to poke holes in these weird situations. And I'm sure there's plenty of ways to poke holes in the hypothetical examples I'm giving you. But that's not the point of the hypotheticals I'm giving you. They're not supposed to be necessarily realistic. All they're doing is testing your logical consistency and whether or not you actually believe in your moral principles like like that you're you're mentioning here. That's it. So just wanted they're, to clear that up. They're testing they're test you're establishing some arbitrary uh, um, scenario to test my standards relative to yours. What I'm it's not relative to mine. What I, what I would say is that I don't want your ethics telling me what the fuck to do. Well, even, no, I'm testing your standards on, relative just, to your own standards. Just a second. Like, even though we're on pretty much the same path, like all of us, we, we understand as rational, reasonable human beings that there are some things in society we need to change. And what those things are, you know, are up for debate or discussion. Um. What we do not want is I do not want Robert's ethics telling me what to do. I do not want my ethics telling Robert what to do. And I do not want yours telling me what to do. You I certainly do. Want, do. Uh, I, I do not. Because we as a, we as a society determine that together. <clears throat> and it's, it's something that evolves. And you mentioned earlier that we are evolving as a society. And that was the foundation of why you believed in 200 years, we would evolve into this thing. We're evolving past stuff as a society. So using the standard that you established, right? Using the standard that you established, your belief in society evolving, right? We have to have that give and take of these forums. But one person doesn't get to dictate ethics. Um, the group gets to gets to get together like this um, and two out of three vote or however the system works and we evolve as a society and there's going to be some times where we go out of bounds and there's going to be times when we go way to the left or way to the right or you know this happens in everything in life um, so the main thing is we're going to evolve as a culture there's no doubt we're going to evolve some way somehow based on sometimes real and sometimes perceived issues right because right now none of us could none of us could deny that there's a lot of pressure to do things like adopt cultural norms like mask wearing or distancing from people or putting our kids in bubbles, right? And this is evolving into the norm, into society. It's kind of getting off of center. But checks and balances when it comes to ethics, you are not infallible. I am not infallible. Robert is not infallible. We are neither all good or all evil. Whether you believe in any religious it doesn't matter. None of us are perfect. None of us have perfect, perfect ethics. That's why we convene. And, and that's why we have these. That's why cultures evolve. I do not want your ethics telling me what to do. I want the freedom to decide because when we when we get to the point where we decide you should or shouldn't do something, um, we take away the potential for these fringe cases, like Bob's out here doing this, he can't do this because the law says this, because we are this type of people. So for every case you bring to the table, uh, possible scenario, and we try to create a construct, there's going to be situations outside of that construct that require us to use common sense. And being human is, is about making difficult decisions right that aren't, aren't always easy you know there are people that have crashed their planes in the arctic or whatever the ridiculous thing is and they end up eating each other that's the extreme case you know th those are extreme cases uh 
you know, and obviously I'm going down a huge rabbit trail here, but as far as ethics, none of us are perfectly good. None of us are perfectly evil. Life is very complicated. I just don't want anybody else telling me what my ethics should be. They can go fuck themselves. That's okay, sure. I'm saying that at you, but I'm saying in general, we we work as a society to evolve that. But we also have to understand as a society, we can get way off the map like we are right now. Does that make sense? I, I think I understand the general gist of what you're saying for sure. Um, would you agree that it's possible to live in an immoral society? We're living in an immoral society. Right. Okay. So when someone comes along and challenges the ideas of society, do you, do you think that's a good idea, a good thing when the, these are some immoral practices being conducted? Everybody should challenge everything all day long. That is the nature of freedom. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And when I challenge your stance on meat eating, uh, like you come back with me with saying you shouldn't be able to tell me what to do, but so far you haven't actually like been able to come up with like a logically consistent argument. No, I'm going to go out and eat a pig and I don't want you telling me to eat a pig or not. I want that decision for myself based on my life, based on what is going on in my world. That's all I'm okay. saying. I don't want okay, you, so I don't want you and a group of other people to say at all times, in all cases, thou shall not eat a pig. It is my commandment. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so are there some circumstances where you'd say it's immoral to eat a pig? Uh, no, I don't believe it's immoral to eat a pig, unless it's Herbie, your 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 uh, your pig that you're emotionally attached to, and then you have the decision whether you want to eat Herbie, uh, whether your love for Herbie uh, extends that far. I mean, that's I'm not I'm. It sounds silly, but. I just was on a farm in Kentucky where the family has a pig and uh, you know, they had, they're going to eat him. They're going to eat Herbie eventually because Herbie's big and fat and tasty and I'm, I'm not, you know, making light of it, but they're emotionally attached and they're going to eat Herbie. Didn't so they, you just use, wait, but didn't you just use like a while ago, use emotional attachment as a reason why we shouldn't eat dogs? Um, everybody has emotional attachment is one of the ways that we separate ourselves that we that we filter uh, you know who we like and who we don't like um, I, you know if I'm emotionally attached to my dog I'm not gonna eat my dog but that's my decision okay you so if I chose to eat my dog you wouldn't have a problem with that and you'd say that's your personal choice uh, no one's, no one in our culture is really eating dogs. So, I mean, okay. Well, there are Chinese immigrants who come over here, and they like this has happened, Steve, where they go yeah. to a pet store. They don't understand the cultural differences here. Okay, let's, let's they go to a pet store and they kill and eat a dog. Would you have a problem with someone doing that? Let's crawl out of the rabbit hole and get back to. Okay, Steve. Like, can you can you answer these questions? Like, like I let you speak for a very long time. I, I'd like to you to just have enough respect for me to answer these questions. Uh, okay, go ahead. Well, I just asked you, like, if okay, if a Chinese immigrant were to come here, they didn't understand the, the difference in culture. They went to a pet store. They so thought that, it was sure, like a meat. That comes back to our established uh, laws, our group, um, our group group ethics, if you will. We establish together, all three of us, or as a population, or what is normal and not normal. So we have established. Uh, that that is not normal that is not acceptable behavior so everyone must abide by that okay so because of like the decision of a society you have to like this is what we come to collectively therefore it's wrong i'm not saying everything that society dictates is correct because sure. as i just mentioned earlier uh and i when i went on and on that there are things we adopt as a society that get out of bounds. Like you must wear masks, Correct. you must put your kid in a bubble. So I'd absolutely agree with that. My, my big thing is I want all of us to have the freedom of nuance to be able to not try to create black and white situations on paper, but understand there is nuance and not everything that's called right is right. And not everything that's called sure. wrong is wrong. Okay. Sure. So Steve, 
I presented a hypothetical situation to you where, okay, suppose somebody was going to eat a pet dog. You said you'd be uncomfortable with that. Uh, and now you're saying, okay, well, the, like the reason why I think somebody shouldn't eat their dog is because collectively as a society, we've you know chosen that's wrong. But you haven't been able to come up with any sort of logically consistent reason why it's wrong to consume a dog, but it's okay to consume a pig. And you've literally just admitted again that society doesn't necessarily make right decisions. So when I challenge your belief, uh, like yeah. these beliefs, where you can't even be logically consistent and you've flat out admitted society isn't always right, what conclusion does that lead to? That it's wrong to kill and eat pigs? No, there is a reason because we like dogs more than we like pigs. That's the reality. <sighs> okay, okay. Uh, it's it, You can laugh at it, but we have dogs and not pets as pigs. I didn't make, we do have pet, pet pigs. I didn't, I didn't make this. I know people have pet pigs. I'm not making absolutes, so let's not get ridiculous. Um, but this is the way our culture is. I didn't create it. Um, uh, okay, but you like you you have admitted that you know culturally, like as a society, we can come to wrong conclusions. Uh, not every you know conclusion we come to is necessarily correct. And since you have not been able to give any logically consistent reason for why we should Here's protect why. a dog and not a pig. Here's why. Doesn't that... You live in a logical world detached from emotion and, and reason and and balance. Like Reason? Every, no, don't interrupt me. That, that can't be reason. That can't, like, I'm sorry to interject, but no, I'm not detached from reason. I'm the only one being reasonable here. You've literally flat out admitted you're not logically consistent. You're, you're ruling out the power of, of emotion and passion and the very essence of what makes humans, uh, human beings. So you're, you're having an appeal to emotion because you just emotionally feel that way. Therefore no, I'm emotional because I'm a fucking human being and I have emotions and strong thoughts like I do now. Um, I, I guess you're not a Ben Shapiro fan. <laughs> Facts don't care about your feelings. <laughs> what the fuck does eating dogs benefit? And talking about this benefit fucking anybody, Richard. Okay, so like I, I, I take it you're not a Ben Shapiro fan. Dude, I am so uh, over all this nonsense. I mean, okay, so. We, we've been like we've it's fine if you want to end the, the discussion on ethics here like again it's your show but I mean we've been through this before like uh, Steve if you're gonna make an appeal to emotion and say just because I emotionally prefer dogs over pigs if we're going to use your ethical framework do you not believe we should apply that consistently what I think here is you continue to whatever I say you continue to apply it to me when I'm talking about society as a whole Oh, okay, well, let's just talk about your specific... That That's not logical, Richard. What I'm talking about is society as a whole. Well, either way, I mean, whether we're talking about society as a whole, I think we're being logically inconsistent, and whether we're talking about you personally, I think you're being logically con inconsistent. Fine. Oh, okay, so then you recognize you're being logically inconsistent. What's your end game here, Richard? Okay, well, I'm, I'm just trying to point out that you have no moral grounds to eat meat, you flat out admit to being logically inconsistent. Who, who determines my moral grounds to eat meat, Richard? You? Well, well, no. Well, yourself, then. Well, okay, I'm well, no, I'm not do. saying I do. Tell me what to eat. Okay, well, okay, like, if you think you should have infinite freedom, like, okay, does that mean I no, can... I did not say I, we should have infinite freedom. <clears throat> Why are you putting words in my mouth? If you're going to talk about logic, stick to the stick to the fucking train tracks, would you? Don't fucking put words in my mouth. Okay, well, Steve, if there's about logic. Then you step up to the plate and stop using bullshit. Don't put words in my mouth. Okay, okay, Steve, I didn't I didn't mean to put words in your mouth. It, it's yes, just that you, a lot of these ideas are kind of conflicting with each other. That's how you. No, work. no, it's just that a lot of your ideas are conflicting with each other. Are you going to round, go round and round chasing your tail for the next 10 years? What the fuck solution? What is this going to help anybody? Okay, well, Steve, I, I'm just... Wasted 20 minutes of the internet's time talking about eating dogs. Who gives a fuck? What is that problem? We're not talking about eating dogs. Fucking buddy watching. We're not talking about eating dogs, Steve. Yes. Like, I've already been over this. I'm testing your logical consistency. Okay, test it, Richard. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not here to be tested by you. I'm not here to be your test subject. 
Okay, okay well, Steve, I, I don't I don't understand why you're getting so angry. Like, if you don't want to talk about this, like, we don't have to talk about this. I'm getting angry because you continue to talk about logic, but then you try to apply. You 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 put words in my mouth, and then you try to make up these ridiculous scenarios. And from a practical standpoint, it doesn't benefit anybody. I okay. want to benefit people. I want to help people. Robert wants to help people, and I sense you want to help people as well. Well, why? I'm not here to. Uh, if you want to psychoanalyze me, you know, go right ahead. I mean, well, this isn't a psychoanalysis. Like, like Steve, uh, I'm sorry for mischaracterizing your position, um, but. Like, I, I just see you have, like, c conflicting views. Like, at one point, like, you said, okay, we should adhere to a certain I'm set of rules, but then... It's fucking conflicting views. We process information on a daily basis. We receive information. We have conflicting views, and we come to the best opinion we can at that time. And that's right. my point. So, like, you I can understand my confusion. Like, like, you want it to be, Richard. Well, right. So you can understand my confusion when, on one I hand, you say confuse Richard. You've literally admitted multiple times to being logically inconsistent. So no, I don't think I'm the one confused here. Okay. You know what? Um, I think this was a bad decision. I, I've really, you know. Okay. Well, there's no like, like, like again, Steve. It's your shit. Okay. Well, I guess All you right. kicked me off. Uh, Bree had a <laughs> uh, supplement question. <laughs> wow. Whoa! <laughs> I was being so polite. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, buddy, that's just so hilarious. <laughs> I tried to be as polite and cordial as possible, and I even told him, like, if it's frustrating you, we don't have to keep talking about it. Holy crap! <laughs> Okay, man. <laughs> yeah, talk about rage quit. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to uh, some of the the streamlabs donos. Bob donated two dollars between Sun Goku, K Dodo, and Corona Bo a Bro. Uh, who's the biggest and most annoying troll? Um, definitely Dodo. Um, Corona Bro. I think he's the same person as Sun Goku. Uh, Dodo is the most annoying. Like, Cade can be weird. He's usually not annoying. Like, the most annoying he can be is, like, interrupt me when I'm talking, um, with, like, just complete nonsense. But Dodo asks, like, extremely simple yet hard to answer questions that are just bullshit. So I'd say Dodo for sure, but thanks for the donation, Bob. Oh my god, I've never had anyone react that kind of way with me just being polite. Holy shit. I had this dream once a guy was filming all these fire ant nests on his farm and as he was filming it this kitten rolled into the fire ant's nest and he said well I would help it but it chose to roll into the fire ant's nest. Okay, um, Cade, I would say, um, <clears throat> maybe, okay, oh, well it was a dream, okay. okay. What? Can you put the donation link in your description? Yeah, sure. And don't forget to notification. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Cade. Um, I guess if it's a dream, that's just a weird dream. Uh, I hate fire ants. I, I've been stung by them a few times. They burn like hell. But uh, yeah, weird dream, Cade. Thanks for the donation, dude. Um, I am not able to hear notification sounds. Um, I'm going to just restart OBS, so I might go black for a second, but I'll be right back. Okay, and now I should be back, <clears throat> and I should be able to hear uh, notification sounds. Shout out to Monkey Pretzel Bunny Prismo and Finn. Thank you uh, for the big donation, iPhone Musings. Uh, yes, as always, shout out to your cats and uh, my cat and Finn. Uh, but thanks for the donation, dude. The world is what you make it. If you make it what you disagree with, then you are your own enemy. This conversation is over. Yeah, it, 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 it 
made no sense. Like he had so many conflicting viewpoints and that he was claiming I live in a fantasy world. Then he appealed to his own like emotional feelings that had no logical consistency or rational basis to it whatsoever. It's like, dude, if you're going to claim like it's wrong to harm animals and it's like wrong to kill your dog and, and then like you're saying, oh, but this is what society says. Like, it made no sense. It was just a jumbled mess. But thanks for the nation, Grimlock. I agree. Yeah? Yeah, I will. I'm clinically diagnosed psychopathic and also a vegan of over four years. This man has no ground to stand on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, when a uh, diagnosed psychopath... <laughs> is uh, more moral and morally consistent than you are, then I, I think you have problems. But um, yeah, like even if you are a psychopath and you, you lack like the ability to empathize, you can just come to conclusions uh, logically. Okay, um, I will link the donations in the description there. Um, but yeah, you can come to these uh, moral, like, these moral issues, like, or these moral conclusions logically, and he was just completely unwilling to do that. Um, like, multiple times I tried to ask him, like, okay, so you agree you're logically inconsistent, so then, you know, by your own reason, reasoning, do you agree you have no moral grounds to consume meat? Uh, what was surprising to me, too, is... He wasn't even willing to name the trait. Like, he he flat out said, like, look, there's no differentiating trait between humans and animals that makes it, you know, acceptable to kill animals but not people. It, it was really bizarre. And, like, he, he even said, yeah, there's no difference between, like, a dog or a pig, which makes it morally acceptable to uh, kill, a, kill a pig but not a dog. And then he tried to justify that by saying like oh but society came to this conclusion that it's okay and then it's like okay well society's come to a lot of bad conclusions and then he even admitted conceding to that that yeah society can be wrong a lot of the time well okay if you admit society is wrong and can't be trusted and you have no logical basis no moral grounds to consume meat you have to admit you're doing something immoral and he just wouldn't admit it. It was insane. <laughs> but thanks for the donation, Grimlock. Like, I think that was crazy how he just flat out kicked me off the stream because I said, like, even right at the beginning when I joined back, it's like, I'd like to talk about, you know, ethics a bit more, but if you're uncomfortable with that, like, if you don't want to because you're getting frustrated, like, that's fine. And then when he got frustrated, I was like, okay, dude, like, we can change the subject or something if you want. There's no reason to get angry. And then he just flipped out. Like, whoa, it's fucking funny, man. <laughs> like, it goes to show, too. Um, people always complain about me being, like, mean and rude and stuff. I've made this point before, you can't control how other people react to you. So, yeah, you can be completely polite and cordial and then people can just treat you like shit and get angry. Like, it doesn't really fucking matter. Uh, so let's see, Poppy, 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 uh, Vegan Gains, Donate to Miller, Steve, I think we should challenge each other's views. Also, Steve, I don't like when people challenge my ethical beliefs. <laughs> this guy's one of the most ignorant dudes you've ever debated, yeah. Um, holy shit. That was just so funny. Yeah, I think we should, you know, question everything, challenge everything. I don't like it when people judge me. <laughs> that was so good. But thanks for the donation, uh, Poppy. Oh boy, that was ridiculous. <clears throat> um, I think what I'll do now is open up the Discord and uh, get people to... Come in, share your opinions and whatnot. So let's see. I will add the Discord link to the description. Eh. There we are. And I'll also spam it in the chat. That was a pure anal rape. Thanks for the entertainment, bro. Yeah, um, <laughs> I 
He did not do well. Uh, that whole discussion went a lot differently than I expected. I was going, I was expecting them to say, uh, you know, oh, you can't build as much muscle on a vegan diet, and I'd have to go into some of the research and argue on that level. But um, yeah, since they agreed with me, essentially that uh, yeah, you can you know feel whatever athletic endeavor you want on a vegan diet. It, it's not a disadvantage. Um, I just went into the ethics and I was like, okay, like if you think it, like these diets are equivalent when it comes to, you know, training, exercise and stuff, like, okay, why wouldn't you choose the diet that doesn't torture and kill animals? But, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that did not go well for them. But thanks for the donation, uh, like anthropic testicles, appreciate it. Uh, Jay donated 240. He was about to have a panic attack and mentally collapse. Well, yeah, he was really panicking. He seemed like especially nervous <clears throat> towards the end there. But thanks for the donation, Jay. Uh, Liam R donated two thirty two. Talk about a roid rage quit. Oh wait, just a second. He had the most original anti-vegan reason. He does not have time to be vegan because he has to help fat people. Fat people though. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't have time to be vegan. I have to help fat people. <laughs> what, the, what sense does that make? And then, like, he tried to say, I, I like eating meat because bacon tastes good. And then, oh my god, it was so bad. Um, <laughs> he got really mad when I started laughing at him, too. Like, he, he's literally saying... Oh, I have, I, I'm emotional, I have feelings. <laughs> yeah, Richard's. Yeah. Ooh. God damn. Mmm. I want to play with you in bed while we're in there. <laughs> Show me the bottom. Does it look weird? No. Show me the bottom. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, oh my god, that was fucking ridiculous. Uh, thanks for the donation, though, iPhone Musings. Liam R donated two thirty two. Talk about a uh, roid rage quit. My man said a bar was a better place for an ethical discussion than an actual debate on veganism. What has been your hardest debate over the years? Uh, probably my debate with Doctor Avi on abortion. I actually ended up losing that debate and conceding. So that was probably, yeah, by far my hardest debate. But thanks for the donation, Liam. Appreciate it. Okay, let's get some people into the Discord. <clears throat> Eh. There we are. Okay, what's up? Slightly crazy vegan. Hey. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, I just watched, like, some of the end of it, and I thought it was really good. Yeah, did you have anything to say about it? <laughs> I mean, I think it's really good that, um, you've got, like, you know, 500 people watching. Obviously, it's not like it's his audience as well. Um, yeah, I just want to say like, even though he's really frustrating and stuff, like the idea isn't to like convince, like I guess I'm talking to everyone, like the idea isn't to convince him, it, the yeah. idea is to convince his audience. And I think he did like a really good job of like convincing like the people watching. Yeah, I think he had an unusually uh, popular stream too. Uh, usually he has trouble breaking like a hundred on his stream on his streams, but I, I saw him at over 150 uh, on his stream. Let me uh, take a look. He was going at the same time. Yeah, okay, yeah, he oh. has 180 on his stream too right now, so that's pretty good. Like, um, so yeah. Okay, so is 300 people like your audience or like his audience? No, he had 180 on his stream uh, right now when I'm looking. I think the entire time when I was debating him, I had uh, 600 on my stream concurrent. Uh, right now I have 508 concurrent. So that's not too bad. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people are able to see that. Yeah, cool. I was thinking, just while we're here, um, should we should do a collab video. Okay. Um, just give me your ideas. Sure. Well, we can talk later on the Discord. Yeah, sure. Discord. All right. Yeah. So you're interested in doing collab like on your channel or my channel or? Uh, either way. Um, just tell me your idea. Uh, I won't say like guaranteed, but if you have any good ideas. Yeah, sweet. Well, yeah, we can brainstorm later. Sure. Okay. Sweet. All right. We'll take care. Okay. Bye. 
Okay, uh, JJ donated $2. Animals were put on Earth to be eaten by other animals to survive. What does that even mean, dude? Like, are you claiming that there's some sort of god that put them there for that reason? Um, I don't care. Uh, clearly, your god is unethical. Um, we are animals, and if we never ate animals, you wouldn't be able to sit down on your chair to think about being vegan, logo figure. Uh, yeah, dude, think of how many uh, people would not be here if it wasn't for things like rape, uh, tribal warfare, um, things like that. Like, guess what? A bunch of terrible things have been done that led to you being here. That doesn't make any of those things justified. And I don't understand why we have to continue those terrible traditions today when there's absolutely no need for it. So uh, maybe you're just a dumb dumb JJ. And if you want to debate me on that issue, uh, hop in the Discord. I'd be more than happy to argue with you. <clears throat> All right, what's going on, dude? Uh, hello. Hey, what's up? Uh, the answer to the name to trait that I would give is uh, the state of being human. So okay, it, define being hum, uh, being human. Like, what does that mean to be human? Like, do you are you do you not know that you alone are a human being? You know what it what is. What do you mean by human? Like, human can mean I I don't know. Like, sapiens. That is a million a dollar question. Yeah, a sapien. Yeah, you could put it that way. Homo sapien, like Neanderthals and all that stuff. Anything. Okay, that can... so okay, so hypothetically, if we if black people weren't human and, and like well, tomorrow we found out, okay. Well, hypothetically, if they weren't human, if they didn't have the, uh, <clears throat> the like they weren't part of the genus Homo, but they were the same as they are now, you're telling me it'd be they okay would... to <clears throat> enslave and murder black people? Uh, well, they would be human-like, so you could be hu okay. Well, you said human. Yeah. You use the trait human, and you defined it as having the genus Homo. I didn't so say if they about, don't. I didn't say it about the geno. I'd say being human-like. So it could be aliens okay. That you said human. And... Okay, you said human, and now you're saying human-like. Okay, now you're playing. Okay, well, with... how human-like do you have to be? I could say a pig is human-like. Uh, it has a brain. I... It has a nervous I... system. It can think and feel. It's intelligent. Uh, they, pig intelligence is being compared to a five-year-old child. Okay, well, now, like, you're switching back and forth. So, first you yeah. said human, then you oh defined human as having the genus homo. Now you're saying human-like. Well, human-like can mean anything. There's plenty of traits that are uh, that are similar in animals, like pigs. Do you so call yourself how human-like human do you have to be? Do you call yourself well, define, human? Well, define your position. I, I asked you, do you not know what human means? I don't know what you personally mean by human. Sometimes when people talk about human, they just mean something like sapience, like the ability to have wisdom and culture and things like that. Yeah, you, that, you, that, and that, I asked you, and a, you literally it's said, a, "It's not a question." And you like literally a, said genetics. You literally mentioned, "Okay, if you're part of the genus Homo, then you're human." Okay, and then I gave you a hypothetical example. Okay, let's say black people weren't of the same genus. They were a different genus. Then you said, oh, well, they're human-like. So then the trait isn't human as it, you described it. Now you're just saying human-like. Okay, well, human-like can mean a lot of different things. It's not human -like something could include that could be pig. answered. It's not something that could be answered in, like, one sentence, though. Okay, then explain. Uh, it basically, in a nutshell, uh... Someone that can like run with this and be able to make spears and whatnot. Okay, so if you're mentally disabled, we should be able to kill you because mentally disabled people can't no, run and make tools. No, because they they're still human. Okay, you literally keep changing your definition of I'm what human changed. is each time I provide you with a hypothetical <sighs> that challenges your belief. So name, think about it. Very, like, think about it very carefully. What is human? Define it, and then we'll uh, then I'll propose a hypothetical to you. Do you call yourself so? A human? What is human? Do you call that yourself that has nothing to do with this discussion? Yeah, it is. That has nothing to do with this discussion. Define what human is. Look, if you, you keep changing the definition, if you're gonna yell at me again, I'm just gonna leave. I'm not okay. I'll fucking kick you off because you're a dishonest shithead. How about that? Bye. <laughs> Okay, um... <laughs> God. Me, Steve Logic, make me mad. <laughs> yeah, um, Steve, like, 
Steve admitted he doesn't even use logic. He just uses his emotional feelings for the most part, apparently. Um, so, yeah, I could understand. But thanks for the donation, Hunter Toby. God, that was bad. Okay, um, next person on. Hey, what's up, dude? Holy shit. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, what's going on? It's crazy to talk to you. Like, I've been watching you since uh, 2015. I, I didn't turn vegan immediately because... I just watched you because I thought you were crazy, but it turns out I was wrong. So uh, anyway, thank you, first of all. Um, I have a question about uh, l cysteine. I think you're familiar with it. Okay, sure. So um, here in the Netherlands, I think they, uh, they aren't required to put it in uh, commercially produced red. So they just put it in and they don't need to put it on the label. Okay. And, uh, knowing this, is it uh, ethical to eat those kinds of bread? So L-cysteine, I've I've heard of it before, but I'm not too familiar. Um, it's animal derived, or it yeah, can be animal, animal derived. Or, yeah. So um, here in the Netherlands, they use it from uh, pig hair, but I think in other okay. countries they can use it from human hair as well. Okay, um, if you have a problem with that, then I'd say make your own bread. It's pretty damn easy. Um, I'm planning on actually making a video on how to make your own bread, like a really easy recipe. Uh, you don't even have to really need bread. Um, it, it it just will be lighter, fluffier, kind of. Um, what I do is I just add uh, a t like a two and a half tablespoons of yeast and uh, one teaspoon of sugar to two cups of water. I let the yeast bloom. And then you just add in four and a half cups of flour, mix it. And then you just knead it, like you can knead it by hand. I use a stand mixer, but then you just let that rest for an hour, then it'll rise. Then you cut it up into whatever balls of dough you want. You like flatten it out first to get out the air bubbles. Then you cut it up into whatever shape you want. Like if you want to make buns or a loaf and then you let that rise for another 30 minutes, then you plop it in the oven and then it's done, but it, it's it's really simple. If you have uh, like a problem with L-cysteine, then I'd say um, just make your own bread. Uh, it's kind of a weird gray area because like one, you don't know if it's added to the bread, and uh, two, like the actual amount of animals that would end up getting killed as a result. Like I I, I think it's so minuscule. Uh, but, like, like really, really it, it's kind of like. Um, processed sugar where they use bone char. I don't think you're really adding to the demand for animal agriculture if you eat bread that has L-cysteine. It's just like an industrial waste product that ends up you know, being used in certain things. So I wouldn't really worry about it personally, but if you have a problem with it, you can make your own bread. Yeah, I guess that's that was my question about like, uh, is it the primary uh product itself or is it like a side product where they just yeah you know, i think it's more like um bone char in the sugar industry i don't think consuming something like that is actually adding to demand yeah exactly anyway uh, my other question was um uh, i think yesterday or uh, I, d I don't remember when but you said that it's uh, ethical to kill like uh, like spider because they are uh, carnivorous yeah so like, uh, the thing I don't understand is then, uh, when I decide to kill a spider, wouldn't it be, like, uh, ethically just to uh, kill me because I killed an animal? No, because you don't kill other animals out of necessity. Um, l look at it this way. If you were, if you saw someone about to murder someone else, and the only way you could prevent that murder is by using lethal force, do you, like, do you think it's okay to actually, like, prevent a murder by using lethal force? Like, somebody was about to stab a girl to death, and you had a gun, and that, like, you shot them? Like, you see that as ethical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah so, so, like, would somebody then have ethical grounds to murder you just because you killed someone in self-defense? Like, no. So, it's the same thing with spiders. Like, okay, you're just killing the spider to prevent other animal deaths, so uh, I don't see how it would be ethical to then kill you. Oh, okay. I guess I can see the reasoning behind it. Um, my last question, I'm curious, like, um, have you ever con considered, like, uh, 
uh, mentoring? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a weird question, but like, have you ever considered mentoring like uh, uh, someone to like <laughs> take your place or something? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Anyway, that was it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. For... Take yeah, care. Yeah. Take care, dude. Okay, uh, Pustain donated two dollars. Steve already removed the stream from his channel. Lmao. Uh, I think he normally, after the streams are done, I think he normally uh, puts them unlisted. So I don't think. Let me look it up. I don't think he deleted the stream just because he got embarrassed. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, wait. Let me see. Okay, it looks like he does leave the streams up, actually. No, he does. So either he deleted it because he's embarrassed or something, or the video, like the uh, live stream is just processing, so you can't see it right now, but after like, I don't know, an hour it'll be up uh, once the video's processed, so I don't know. It'll be funny if he like actually deletes it, and like I'll still have my stream up here. Thanks for the donation, Pustain. Uh, bro, donate $2. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that male enhancement video you said you were going to make. All the videos on YouTube about it are either scams or they don't explain it enough. Please, man, I think you're the only one uh, I would trust, to be honest about it. Yeah, um, I've been putting that on the back burner. I've just been focusing on the vlogs and stuff lately, but um, it's still I, I, it's still on my mind. Um, no promise of making it anytime soon, but when I feel motivated to do it, I'll do it. Uh, thanks for the donation, that bro. JJ donated two dollars. How do you not understand that if animals were never put on Earth to be eaten, we wouldn't be here today? I don't know what you mean by put on Earth. Um, that is just very weird, murky, weird wording. Um, regardless, okay. Um, I'm sure if there was no such thing as rape, you probably wouldn't be here today. I'm sure everyone has a rapist in their ancestry that they can thank their like thank for their existence. Um, does that make rape okay? Does that make every horrible thing that's ever been done in history okay because you now exist today? Um, I've already gone over this. If you want to debate me, debate it in Discord. Um, get that through your thick skull, right? Sure, dude. Uh, thanks for the nation, JJ. I think that dude's just a troll or something. I don't know. <clears throat> hey, what's going on? I hear you. What's up? Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, good. That's good. Um, so I found your videos through 16 Leo. Okay. Go on. Um, and I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Yeah, sure. So in his videos, um, it kind of made you seem like somebody that really hated people and wanted to kill people and babies. Right. What is your actual stance on that? Like, um, I would consider myself a misanthrope. I don't like most people. Um, I've been open about this too. I actually have uh, a phobia of children. Uh, I, I think the technical term is uh, pedophobia, where I'm just scared of children. But the whole mm -hmm. stomping babies thing, that was just a joke. I, I don't know why everyone okay. takes it seriously. But no, in general, um, yeah, I don't like most people. So that was taken out of context then? Yeah. Um, and what about the girl that um, said that you threatened her as well? Yeah, so she offered to debate me and then like she ended up just wasting my time like crazy and I was just having a bad day and I lost my temper. Um, if I had known she was 16, I, I probably wouldn't have said that still, but I, I had no idea about her age. Um, yeah. I still don't think what I did was wrong, though. Um, she had the position that it's okay to kill and eat animals. So uh, mm -hmm. even after explaining veganism to her and shit, she still said, no, it's fine to kill and eat animals. Um, I would just challenge anyone who has a problem with me, like, I, I don't know, threatening somebody who's going to kill and eat animals. Okay, well, 
if that person was going to uh, like kill and eat human beings, would it be wrong for me to like threaten them? You'd probably say no. So name the trait, name the trait that's lacking in animals that if lacking in trait equalized human beings would make it unreasonable to threaten somebody if they were going to kill and eat trait equalized human beings. Yeah, I um, agree with you. I don't know much about veganism. Um, right. I do try to, because I myself don't like the animal trades of killing animals and, and things like that as well. So I do try to um, research more recipes and things like that for vegan foods. Sure. Um, but my biggest problem is I have a child. Uh huh. And he is a very big meat eater. Okay. What type of advice would you give for somebody that is looking into going into veganism to learn more about it and also help their child go onto a more vegan diet? Sure. As well? So, yeah. So, um, first of all, for you, like if you just want to transition to a vegan diet, um, you could uh, go to the website Challenge22. Um, what they do is they hook you up with a registered dietitian, and uh, it's a free service. They'll make you a custom meal plan. So if you're totally lost with how to eat completely plant-based, uh, you know there's a good resource for you. There's also a lot of uh, really good cookbooks. Um, Thug Kitchen is a really good cookbook. Um, okay. Gaz from Avant Garde Vegan, he has a YouTube channel. He has a number of uh, cookbooks with really good recipes. You might want to uh, use some of those recipes if your kid is like really picky eater because there's a lot of things that are built as like meat substitutes or they're like it's entirely plants but it tastes good. So like if your kid's a picky eater, things have to taste a certain way. Uh, that might be good for your kid. Uh, plus there's like a lot of mock meats. So uh, okay. there's Gardein, Field Roast, uh, Beyond Meat, like a lot of things like that where if he is being really picky and he needs something that's, you know, like meat, just give him something like that. Uh, and I'm assuming because he's a kid too, if you just give it to him without telling him what it is, he'll, he won't be able to tell the difference. He'll just say, oh, this is, this is good. It tastes like meat and it's like nice, nice and flavorful. Um, yeah. And I think uh, it's also important to teach kids about these ethical issues. Like, I don't know if your kid would be so interested in eating meat if he knew animals get tortured and killed to produce that meat. So um, yeah. I'd recommend, like, I, I know, like, people have different views on this. Like, oh, if you show a kid that, it'll traumatize them. I think it's important to know where your food comes from. So if it's not good enough for his eyes, why is it good enough for his stomach? So uh, I'd recommend checking out the documentaries Earthlings or Dominion. It goes over the animal okay. agriculture industry. Um, so that might be something you might want to watch with your kid, and uh, that might help. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And thank you for being really kind as well. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day. All right, night. well, take care. You too. Okay, JJ donated $2. Rape and all those things you mentioned are not essential for living. Uh, neither is eating meat. Eating animals was essential for our existence. Cool, it's not anymore. Therefore, animals were put on earth to be eaten by other animals. That is a non sequitur. Uh, so thanks for the donation, J uh, JJ, but appreciate the donation, you dumbass. Okay, um, let's bring the next person in. Hey, what's going on? Hello? I'll just uh, give them a second to adjust their mic or whatever. Most kids don't react traumatized or traumatized or more traumatized than adults who watch footage have seen this a lot at the Cube of Truth. That's interesting. Yeah, I've done cubes and uh, kids respond pretty well to seeing that sort of thing, whereas I've literally had adults come out and uh, attack cubers because they're showing a, a, like animal agriculture footage. Uh, it's pretty weird, but kids are more just curious and they're like, oh my god, why is that happening? Okay, hey, what's going on? Hello? Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, how are you, vegan gang? 
I'm doing great. Hey, um, your your mic sounds very very muffled. Make sure it's close to your mouth. Is it sounding better now? Yeah, it sounds great now. Oh sweet. Um, I don't. I, I'm not here to talk for too long. I know you got a lot to do, but um, I have some. I, I'm personally not vegan myself, um, but I'm starting to look into more uh, ways of transitioning into a vegan diet. And right now, I'm uh, sorry. This isn't a debate talk, but huh? Sure, go on. So I'm just trying to see what ways there are of uh, communicating uh, transitioning to more of a vegan lifestyle to some of my friends because I've been talking to them about the downsides of eggs and milk and red meat and a lot of lean meats as well and they always just come back to the fact that you're going to lose muscle or that there's too much estrogen in soy and I'm, besides the science that's available it just sounds like none of that really gets through to people. Yeah, so uh, the Game Changers documentary uh, tackled that issue pretty well. Um, I'd recommend like trying to get them to watch the Game Changers documentary. It's it's on Netflix now too. Um, I have a few videos on soy. Like a, like again, if you're familiar with the research um, and, and they don't listen, then like they're just stupid. But I, I would say yeah, check out like the Game Changers documentary. Um, there's dudes like Patrick Baboumian in that documentary who ate a ton of soy, but he's like super freakishly strong. Mm -hmm. He's a strong man. Uh, you can also check out other YouTubers like Clarence Kennedy. He is really a world, world class Olympic weightlifter. He's vegan. He eats soy. No problems. Uh, so yeah, like if, if they're not going to listen to the evidence and the research, then I'd say just, you know, um, provide examples of like strong vegan athletes uh game changers documentary would probably be the one of the best kind of films to get them to watch well that sounds awesome all right thank thank you richard i appreciate it i, I love you yeah no video, problem dude so you have a great day thanks yeah you too man take care take care <clears throat> Hey, what's going on? Hey, dude, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry if uh, the sound quality is kind of bad. I'm using 4G. Um, it's I'm, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm here to talk against veganism since I'm uh, vegan myself, but um, I'd like to uh, debate you on uh, some of the topics I've heard you talk um, in the past, like in perspective philosophy. But um, just before... Um, you know, I present my point. Could I uh, tell you something I saw yesterday? Sure. Uh, you, you know, you did it wrong, right? The fucking YouTube channel. I did what? You know the channel, you did it wrong. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the uh, fucking made a video on why your uh, workout diet is extremely unhealthy. And um, uh, a lot of the time she was insinuating, or they were insinuating that... Uh, Fucking protein isolate is unhealthy for some fucking reason. And regardless of any meal, she just fucking put that fucking shit and kept saying, oh, let's hope the next meal gets better, implying that fucking protein and lentils are unhealthy. So um, I joined their uh, Discord to uh, debate them on the topic, and every time I kept asking them on, on evidence or explanation on how they are, or, or how protein isolate itself is unhealthy. Um, they kept dodging the question and uh, telling me that uh, I either have to prove it's healthy or they're not going to talk to me. Um, I only, I'm only they're the ones making this. the claim. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're going to fucking make <laughs> claim, it's sort of my job to bring up evidence. I really just want to ask um, about channels like Vegan Phobic and uh, You Did It Wrong in Zverej. Did you ever do something to piss them off or whatever? Because like 90% of their content is just fucking hate content against you. Um, I think it's because I'm one of the bigger vegan YouTubers who's more outspoken. Um, that's probably why they focus on me, but they'll go after like every tiny channel that you've never even heard of. They'll mm. usually with the smaller channels, they'll just make like really stupid, petty personal attacks about, yeah, uh, I don't sure. know, they look too yeah. thin or they're fat or their kid's hair doesn't look right or, or some bullshit like that. 
But then with me, they might make like longer, more detailed videos, but they go after everyone. Uh, these people are just extremely insecure. That's that's why they do this. Yeah, dude, I agree. And um, every other fucking channel, like uh, that absolute retard named uh, fucking 16 Leo. Dude, it's so fucking mind numbing. Every time I watch a video of yours, you make decent points or at least points. And literally no fucking other YouTuber goes and debunks them. They all do character attacks. It's like, so we see the yeah. fucking enzyme inhibitors from dogs. He said he wants to kill a baby, etc. Anyways, uh, yeah. can we move on to the topic I wanted to discuss? Yeah, sure. Um, I might be a bit, um, uh, I might be a bit, uh, my, my memory is his because uh, I saw it about a year ago or so. I think it was in um, your debate with perspective philosophy. I think you said you agree with the universal single payer healthcare system, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I think I might be wrong. About a week or so, uh, in a stream debate you had, you said you also want to legalize all drugs. Yeah. Um, do you think? Um, well, I'm not going to go into the moral topic because yeah, I agree. The reason we uh, we you know, don't allow people to do self-destructive acts is because of moral contracts. But if you th do you think that if you allow people to take off um, of off the counter drugs, sorry uh, for stuttering a bit, um, if you allow them to take off the counter drugs where, you know, their fucking psyche might spiral or, you know, health insurance might, pay sorry, 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 let me just um, clear my thoughts. If they take drugs and they do a lot of fucking stupid shit or they need some health consolation, do you think that would ruin a universal single payer healthcare system because other people will have to pay for their other for their mistakes? No. Okay, so um, I think the basis of your argument here is whether, like, essentially the basis is you think um, legalizing drug use will increase use, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, off the off the off the counter. Yeah. Drugs. Um. Okay. So legalizing something like cocaine, uh, that that doesn't mean it's going to be sold over the counter. Um. You can still have restrictions on sale, hmm. but um. Yeah. So. Y yeah. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean okay. You're going to be able to get co cocaine and crystal meth and heroin or or something just over the counter like. Obviously, I, I don't know. D Walmart isn't going to sell that uh, that sort of thing. Um, I I have seen uh, studies on marijuana use, and uh, sometimes legalization increases use, but it's really hard to say because you can't really have an accurate representation of use if you don't have any mm. real way to track like a, a black market. So. Um, I, yeah. I have seen, but I have seen some studies where certain places in Europe have legalized weed and they end up having uh, lower uh, lower um, rates of use, like among a certain age group compared to like um, other countries that have kept it illegal. They just use like surveys and shit, uh, anonymous surveys. So I, I don't necessarily think that uh, legalizing drugs increases use. There have also been needle sharing programs that have opened up in uh like a lot of uh a lot of areas where there's like really heavy drug use um allowing drug users like heroin addicts access to needles so that they have easier access to their drugs that's actually done the opposite it, it's reduced heroin heroin addiction rates and it's also had the benefit of uh, reducing HIV transmission rates. So I don't necessarily agree with the idea that legalizing drugs automatically increases use. Maybe in certain circumstances it would. I think in some circumstances it also wouldn't. Um, regardless, the cost savings of a single payer healthcare system are absolutely astronomical. Um, I think on average, Americans pay about four times as much for healthcare yeah, compared yeah, yeah. to like any other country, and that's just on average. Yeah. Like you can find cases of eight times and shit. So, like, yeah, the bureaucratic bloat and everything associated with like having to rely on insurance companies and shit um, mm -hmm. that adds to expenses tremendously. And because people are afraid of healthcare expenses, they'll wait for going to the doctor until their condition is so severe yeah. they have no Which choice then yeah then they they really can't fucking pay for it and then it's even more expensive so 
Yeah, there, there's a million reasons why. Um, I I would say like clearly, socialized healthcare system is beneficial, even in a situation where okay, there's an increase in drug use from legalization of drugs. I don't think that would end up like you know more than covering that you know extra cost savings. Like I, I see that as highly unlikely. Yeah, sorry if um, I mis- misinterpreted your point. Your misinterpret. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. It's that with a lot of liberals, well, personally, yeah, I'm also lib left, but when discussing with a lot of um, uh, liberals, they usually want to legalize drugs. But um, every time I talk about or we try to discuss about restrictions, a lot of them um, tend to say that we shouldn't have many restrictions and people should be free to buy and it should be accessible everywhere. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. Besides the moral issue, the practical one, that um, restrictions, legislations, and policies, yeah, that is a you know a cost-effective solution. But um, on the topic of um, allowing morally to for people to use drugs, um, just um, sorry, uh, let me just uh, gather my thoughts. Yeah. Um, so you said you will allow people if they want to um, use drugs, right? Of the counter ones. Um, like, like, what do you mean? Like, if someone what do you mean by to, over the know, counter? Like, let's say they want to fucking buy, I don't know, man, like heroin. Would you, that would, would you agree that is moral? It should be morally allowed for them to go and get heroin. Uh, yeah, uh, I do. Okay, okay. So, for for one thing, I think you should be able to do whatever you want with your own body. I think. Um, exactly. That's so sorry yeah. to interrupt you. That's where I'm going to. That's where I'm going with the point. So you should agree that people that want to kill themselves should be allowed yeah. to do it then by that following yeah. that logic. Hmm? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the suicide booths in Futurama. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen them. In, they're in the first yeah, couple like, of episodes in season one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we should have something like that. Uh, I do believe not only in like assisted suicide euthanasia, but I think people should have a choice to kill themselves if they wanted. Um, having something like a suicide booth, uh, maybe not implemented in that exact same way where like anyone can walk in whenever they want, but, um, yeah. having some sort of system where somebody who's like severely depressed can like commit suicide, uh, that would eliminate like a lot of, uh, cost issues with healthcare. There's a lot of failed suicide attempts and it like massively drives up medical care costs. Um, it's also really stressful for like the person and, and their family and shit if they end up surviving. Um, and a lot of people like jump off of bridges or something and smash into a car, or, like stupid shit happens like that. If we had suicide yeah. booths, um, that would eliminate the problem. And again, you could set it up sort of like needle sharing programs where just because, yeah, you're giving people easier access to their drugs, but at the same time, you can have like have some sort of system where if they're about to uh, commit suicide, Okay, well, then you could have somebody there or some sort of organization that could, like, tell you, or, okay, are you sure you want to do this? Like, there's an organization here that can help. Like, do you have any problems that you that you think, like, anybody could help you with? So yeah, it might actually exactly. end up reducing suicide risk because you're giving people access to um, help. resources that they, they don't realize they have. Because mm-hmm. if you're super depressed, you're not necessarily going to know about any sort of suicide hotline. And then you're just going to end up killing yourself. But if you have, or like, that it could be, be only... a hormone imbalance, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the only way of um, like practically committing suicide, where you know it's a sure thing, is like a suicide booth, um, mm-hmm. then you're going to go there, and then you know you're going to have access to that resource that you wouldn't otherwise have. So yeah, I think people should be allowed to kill themselves. Uh, I think we should have. You know, hypothetical suicide booths, not exactly like Futurama, but like a similar idea. Yeah, uh, I want to discuss um, a couple of few other topics. Uh, do you have like... Um, uh, I want to say? get some other people on, um, but you can okay. come back in like on another stream or later. Okay, thanks a lot for sharing your time. Okay. Have a very good day. See no ya. problem, dude. Take care. Hey, what's going on? Hello? What's up? <coughs> uh, hear me, dude? It's weird. I can uh, hear him coughing. 
Yo, I'm sorry. Hey. Hello. Hey, hey what's Richard. going on? Been a, been a fan since your beef with Lex Fitness, so I've been here okay, for cool. a while. Yeah. Uh, it's not much of a topic of debate, but how would you go about... Um... Hello? Yeah, hi. Yeah. So, I just want to go about the topic. Uh, what... Hello, hello. Yeah, hi. I'm listening. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll just get back right to it. So, it's not much of a topic for debate, but how would you go about transitioning to veganism when the movement isn't given as much attention like in other countries? So, I live in the Philippines. I think veganism right. is uh, around 5% of the population. It's around 2 million. Uh, it's quite a I bit. Think, I think that yeah. might actually be like equal or if not a bit better than North America. Uh, however, my problem here is uh, with the transitioning. Since uh, I live in a, in a dorm uh, and I don't have a kitchen and okay. I'm not financially well off. So how do you yeah, yeah. go about this situation? In trying to transition to veganism. Sure. Please. Okay. Do you have access to like a microwave? Um. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. Really? Jesus Christ. Yeah. So um, the only way we could like get by by food is, uh, getting going to the store and buying like a to go food. However, there isn't much. Uh. Yeah. Like I said, there isn't much uh, emphasis on veganism. So. How the would... fuck? Like. Like, wait, so if you live in a dorm, you literally, like, have no access to an oven or a microwave or anything? Yeah, that, that's the... Th they don't even freedom. allow microwaves in the dorms? Yes, there there are some here in the Philippines, yes. We're, we're not as uh, progressive like the uh, like other countries, so we have to provide Sure, but I mean, like, you, okay, so you couldn't get a microwave and then put it in, uh, in the dorm? Like, you don't yeah. have the money for it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, that complicates things a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, um, like there are some foods that you don't really have to cook, like uh, like fruit, bananas, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, shit. <sighs> okay, could you <laughs> get like I don't know a hot plate? Yeah. Something. However, uh, the I do not really know where the the ingredients are coming from so since we're in the philippines we mix no no i mean there there's a thing called a hot plate where uh it's i think it's usually used in um chemistry but you can get like mm -hmm. uh, it's basically like an electric stove but it, it's a single burner that's portable um you can't get something like that and in just a pot yeah i'm financially uh, not well off so that's why right Right, but those are usually pretty goddamn cheap. Uh, yes, but uh, if you're gonna like, uh, uh, I'm a student, a scholar, so I, I only get paid by around, let's say, uh, like a hundred dollars per per month. Right. And, uh, yeah. So I find it really difficult to budget that to set aside just for a. Let's say I buy that. I buy that hot, that hot plate. I probably won't have anything to eat for the rest of that month. So that's basically the situation. I don't think they're $100, dude. I think he can find them for like 20 bucks. I mean, I mean that's what I'm given per month. So I have to like pay for yeah. the rent and other stuff, the electricity and such. So oh, I okay, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah, so how how do I go about this if uh I have these I, What confuses me, like, how can you buy, like, store-bought, like, live entirely off of store-bought food if you can't, like, afford a, a microwave I mean, or like, even a hot plate? Uh, since our culture here, we have uh, cafeterias, like, uh, they sure. provide cheap food. We call them, uh, like, carinderia, that's what we call them. It's like a cafeteria. It's uh, homemade food. However, the vegan options aren't as, aren't as much as the, uh, the meat options we have here. This is why uh, I'm asking since. Uh, okay, should... so here's here's what I'd say you should do. Mm -hmm. um, set aside whatever amount of money you can, like a, like just a, a, a nor like a cheap ass electric hot plate. They can't be more than like twenty dollars. Um, I would say just for the next few months, set aside, I don't know, two, three, four, five mm -hmm. bucks if you can. Yeah. 
uh, then eventually get that and just get a pot and then you can boil potatoes, rice, beans. You can pretty much make whatever like dishes you want just with by boiling water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for the time being, I mean, you can just eat canned beans, like canned food. You can get canned yeah, yeah. beans, canned vegetables, like canned everything. Um, yeah, that's what I'm that's going how for I'd, now. Yeah. yeah, that's how I'd get by. I see, I see. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for the... Insight. All right. No problem, dude. Take care. Take care. Um, <clears throat> okay. I think this guy's in next. Hey, what's going on, dude? Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Hey. Yeah, um... So... You know, um, I just want to talk about some stuff. Um, so, you remember when you made that video on Brian Turner and John Venus, like, um, how they weren't, like, you shouldn't really associate yourselves with ex-vegans? Yeah. Yeah, um, I know, you like, so you are friends with a hunter, right? Yeah. Okay, so, um, like... I don't understand how how could you be with some a friends with someone who murders animals in the most brutal horrific way imaginable like shouldn't like if we were, if we were to be friends with like how do I put put it this way like if we were to be friends with uh hunters your problem is like we can't be friends with non vegans I'm not sure. I don't think that's what you're saying, but I'm, I think what you're what you're trying to say is that um, we we shouldn't be friends with people that are, you know, abusing animals and know that they're abusing animals, right? Yeah. So um, the overall, I I can't remember my exact position in the video, but I think um, I don't know if I like I I can't even remember at this point. I don't know if I said, like, we can't ever be friends with ex-vegans, but um, my position was, like, yeah, we probably shouldn't. We should probably push them away uh, if they become ex-vegan. It's essentially like being friends with a Nazi. We probably shouldn't have company like that. Um, the difference, like, the difference between, I don't know, being friends with an ex-vegan, being friends with a hunter, is someone who has been vegan they know like they've been like they've had a you know a shift in their thinking where okay i recognize that i'm committing a holocaust i recognize i'm doing something wrong a and then they go back to doing something wrong and in every case they don't have some like different ethical view what they do is they're just like they just make up some stupid excuse like eh, i matter more i have some health issue i just didn't want to bother they don't actually have an argument for why, yeah. like any sort of sound rational argument. It's just that they don't care anymore. Um, so, like my friend who's a hunter, I don't really talk to him uh, really anymore. Um, pretty much all my meeting eating friends, they've don't really talk to them ever, just because I have like vegan friends now. Um, but uh, yeah, the difference there with my meat eating friends is they haven't been a part of that world. They haven't ever had that uh, mindset change where. They've recognized, okay, like this is wrong. Um, the people that I'm, that are Karnas that I've been friends with, the only reason I've stayed friends with any of them is because they weren't being dishonest. I've had one meat eating friend who told me flat out, okay, like, you know what? I, I'm an asshole. I recognize that I'm a piece of shit. I try to eat plant based, but you know, sometimes like my dad cooks fish or something for dinner, and then I eat it like something like that. He's flat out admitted to me like it's wrong. Um, oh, yeah. So I stayed friends with him for that reason. Uh, my hunter friend, I'll argue with him pretty much every time I meet him about this, this stuff at some point. And he hasn't been dishonest with me. Um, he just has like a, a different viewpoint, a, a viewpoint that I think is obviously wrong, but, um, he hasn't lied like Steve Shaw, you know, like the guy yeah. I just debated. Oh my God, so, dude. That guy has the intellectual capacity of like a fucking third grader, man. <laughs> well, he relied on like l uh, literally an emotional argument. Like I, I just don't feel right <laughs> eating that, but I feel better eating this. Yeah. Like it's bizarre. That's how you know, like. That's how you know that you've, like, really 
fuck someone up that has no argument. Like, yeah, <laughs> you really discovered <laughs> they that have to. They have an argument. <laughs> so they it, tried it's to. pretty. It's pretty bizarre to like rely on that as an argument. Well, I we can't be logical. I ha I have emotions and feelings. Like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, but like, here's the thing, right? So, um, so would you consider like would you still consider them friends or just like someone that you talk to? Like, yeah, like at this point, they're more people I talk to. Um, like you know, since I have vegan friends and stuff that I, you know, uh, identify with more and have more things in common, I've just you know, hung out with them and not really talked to my meat eating friends much anymore. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's something that I just wanted to talk to talk to you about because you know, um, like, I I I can't understand how you could be, be friends with someone like. Um, that's someone that just, you know, horrifically treats animals horrifically, but like more that if you're, if you like become friends with a girl, then you like get really close with her and then you start to have a relationship, but she eats meat. She starts wearing fur. Like, I don't know how you could be in a stable relationship with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, it's weird. Um, I remember there was this CrossFit athlete who was vegan and, uh, he was actually pretty big in the activism scene. And he ended up meeting some girl uh, during one of his CrossFit matches, and she's this paleo primal meat eating like oh piece God. of shit. And then I guess the pussy was too good, and then he ended up getting her pregnant, and then he ended up getting stuck with this girl who's fucking meat eater. And then I saw him make posts like, "Oh, we should be so beat to beat eaters and stuff, and we should be kind and compassionate to human beings." It's like you know why he's fucking saying this shit. So yeah, I don't think you should be with someone who is like, that's like a huge, is just a, yeah. Like that's it, a huge it's a totally change. yeah a totally different mindset than you. I don't think that's really healthy or good, and I don't think you should be with someone that makes you compromise your ethical beliefs for sure. Yeah. Anyways, man. Um. Yeah. You, we were talking about the squat rack that I bought last time. Yeah. I, I got. Right. A, yeah. Remember me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I got a. The rogue squat rack is pretty good, yeah. So yeah, you were right. You don't really need like a power rack, but I feel like to to do overhead presses, it's a bit difficult because we have to change the clip every single time on a squat rack. Um, like what do you mean? You know, like the clip where you like how do I explain this? So you know the clips where you hold, where you put the barbell. Right. Yeah. So you have to change those every single time. Oh, what, for, like, a different height person? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... that's you could that. just get a... You can not You can just get an extra set, and then when you're doing, like, a particular exercise, then you don't have to change them back and forth. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. That's a good idea. Anyways, man, that's... That's all I want to talk to you about. All right, no problem, dude. Yeah, same one. All right, take care. Um, I think... This guy was the next. Hey, what's up? Hey, Richard, man. Been a fan since day one, man. What's up? All right. Not much, man. Oh, nice, man. I, I have two questions. Um, you know, I've been following you for a while, and, um, like, I've... Um, in one of your earliest videos, you told something about you became vegan because you saw some pig getting tortured or uh, I don't really remember what it was no but... I became vegan because of a Gary Rofsky speech oh okay yeah that, that, that I, I don't really care but I thought it was something about the pig but anyhow um, like I find it very difficult you know because of your videos I tried going plant-based and tried going vegan but I find it very difficult. Maybe I'm a psychopath. I don't know. But I find it very difficult to have any like emotional attachment to the food I eat. You know, when I see a squirrel on the f on the ground and uh, it's in pain or something, then I feel empathy. But I just can't feel empathy when it's on my plate. Not, not a squirrel, but like chicken or something. Do you know how I can change that feeling so that I can uh, become vegan? Because I feel like that's blocking me from really becoming vegan and not only plant-based you know well you don't necessarily have to have an emotional attachment to any of these animals to just make the right choice like you can just use logic and reasoning um you don't necessarily have to care about a particular issue like i don't know 
you might not care about women, you might not care about black people or other human beings, but I mean, you can't just make the logical conclusion that, okay, it's probably wrong to enslave other people, discriminate, you know, things like that. Um, but uh, besides that, like if you want to, I don't know, feel a greater emotional attachment to these animals, then I'd say I uh, should probably watch documentaries like Earthlings, um, Dominion, Dominion's a really good one. And uh, maybe you could um, volunteer to help out like at an animal sanctuary for a day and just see how these animals are, like how they behave and stuff and get to know them. That can help. Yeah, I uh, yeah that the uh, that the last one might be a uh, option, but because I've seen the documentaries and I I think it's really sad, and um, I'm watching these BBC uh, natural uh, documentaries, you know, about ants killing other ants, etc. And then I uh, I feel pity and sadness for when the ants die, you know, like small mm -hmm. stuff like that. But when I don't know, man, when chicken is on my plate, I just don't feel it, and uh, that's making. That's making me a bit sad, you know. I wish I could like uh, feel some sort of emotion, so my choices uh, would be like intrinsically justified or intrinsically motivated. Now, if I go vegan, I would just go vegan because I have to go vegan, you know. And that right, I don't right. think that would last very long because I've tried it and I, I just quit after like a couple of weeks because I just don't. Uh, it's not intrinsic for me. Do you know how right. I, yeah. um, uh, like, again, I would say if you consistently have that issue, I think you should just ignore your feelings and just do what you know is right. Yeah. Um, and aside from that, like, if you want a, a stronger emotional connection to these animals, then, yeah, watching documentaries like Earthlings Dominion can help. But it, it sounds like you might also get a, an added benefit from actually spending time around these animals. So, mm -hmm. like, again, you can help out in an animal sanctuary and... Um, like, I think if you spend any amount of time with those animals, like, chickens are, like, awesome little creatures. They're really curious. Um, they have different personalities and everything. Um, I remember I met this chicken who was taking care of another chicken's babies just because it really, really liked babies. Um, they're really, like, kind, caring animals. They'll, they'll even care for other... Uh, animals like if they find a puppy they'll just they just have a natural care and concern for other animals so i think you just need to i don't know spend some time around some of these animals and get to know them and that might help yeah i uh no, yeah maybe i should uh it's it's great because uh you know i live in like a rural area with a lot of uh, farm animals etc so it's uh you know that's not very difficult for me oh yeah and i have one more other question if i may when is the next saga of uh, frank tufano coming up man i've been waiting for that Probably juicy soon, frank man tufano he deal. is yeah he is uh uploading again i was thinking of doing another stream tonight where i respond to some of his new videos okay oh, that sounds great man i'll uh, definitely pop in uh, anyway thank you for your time man no problem dude take care yeah you too thanks Hey, dude, what's going on? Hey, bro. Hey. Uh, I think I'm... I think I'm behind on the stream. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, so I just had a um, couple of quick questions for you just in regards to, I guess, the big sort of thing people talk about now is climate change. So you can probably even... I guess Bill Gates is probably one of the champions for the cause where he's gone from shifting from, you know, Corona being the biggest issue humanity faces to climate change being the biggest issue. And I'm not like a denier of any of that sort of thing, but it's kind of like there's an elephant in the room that they fail to talk about, which is veganism and how much that impacts helping the planet. And I was just wondering if you know any politicians who are actually championing the cause of veganism in terms of helping the planet when it comes to climate change and, you know, that whole topic. Yeah, I don't I don't know any in particular. Um, I only know two vegan politicians. Uh, one's Tulsi Gabbard. I don't know if she's like really big on talking about like climate change and how animal agriculture impacts that. Uh, and I know there's one other dude. It's a black guy. I can't remember his name, but I remember I was really disappointed because he flat out said like, oh, if he ever became president or something, um, you know, he wouldn't try to stop meat eating and crap. And I think he flat out said that he doesn't believe animal agriculture is a big, uh, you know, factor in climate change. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the problem yeah. is like, I guess when you talk about these people, I guess they don't, being politicians, they don't generally have the ethical conclusion from 
you know, their thoughts and feelings to, I guess, you know, they see everything as numbers and figures and blah, blah, blah. Um, the yeah. other thing I was going to say to you is about the guy you were debating. Um, by the way, your girlfriend's really cool and uh, she's like so many Aussies today. Um, I'm Applejar, so I've spoken to you guys before in the chat, but mm, not yeah. in, I just joined the Discord. But I was going to say, I, I caught the tail end of the conversation you had with that guy. And uh, I've been vegan for 13 years. And as with you, we've talked to like all different kinds of personalities or whatever. But he kind of strikes me as the guy that he's like, oh, I'm so open-minded. I'm so open-minded. I'm happy to chat about anything. And then when you really challenge their beliefs, they get defensive, argumentative. Dude, he whatever. like during the debate, he literally fucking said, oh, I think everything should be challenged. We should question everything. Yeah, we should have yeah. like debate, discussion all the time. And then he la like later, like in the next breath, flat out said, I don't want anyone judging me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. okay, dude. <laughs> but his whole premise is like, oh, I'm this open-minded dude and I'm so willing to chat about anything. Everything's on the table. And then you actually give him a proper challenge to his belief system and he trips on his own feet and then he goes oh fuck this is annoying i don't like this i don't like this challenge you know um, yeah. the, other thing, the last thing i was going to say um is in terms of australia i don't know if you know but uh hallucinogens particularly mushrooms is heavily criminalized here so yeah um, yeah i know as far as i know you can face up to 20 years in prison for being in possession it's of fucking mushrooms, stupid which actually happened to a chef who went to an area where he was oh just picking God. for mushrooms and he was just picking mushrooms to cook with and he happened to get caught and some of them he had were hallucinogenic and he had to go to court over it and nearly went to prison for like three years just for you know picking all sorts of mushrooms it's fucking but, stupid they grow wild suck my yeah. fucking dick Unfortunately, here, a lot of they have like ranges and they also spray a lot of the natural areas where they grow naturally, like the woodland sort of areas. Um, but the thing is here in Melbourne, particularly where I am, um, in terms of hospital visits, mushrooms account for the lowest uh, amount of hospital visits per recreational drug out of all the recreational drugs. The drugs yeah. I think it's like 0.2% all up. Um, but it is also one of the heaviest criminalized drugs. And uh, a guy in Melbourne who's like very, very, very wealthy, he's like one of the most wealthy people in Australia. His wife had some health condition. They sought uh, all sorts of options. They went overseas and did uh, microdosing and they ended up funding all these studies here. And there's two studies they did was for depression and for terminal illness, I think it was. And I think they came down to like 80% for both was a better outcome for those people. But unfortunately, like, I don't get this idea where the government won't listen to these studies. Like, they just go, well, we're just going to stick with this same belief where, you know, drugs are bad. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they're fucking, like, 60-year-old pieces of fucking shit. That's why. <laughs> yeah, 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 basically. Now, that comes down to my last question. It's about subsidies. So, we all know the meat industry is heavily subsidized. Um, particularly in Australia, it's huge because it's all about farmers and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but, you know, there's like, in terms of, I know in America, like uh, Beyond Meat boomed in the stock market. Like it just went fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, we got several companies here that have boomed. There's like also that one that's backed by Oprah Winfrey, like, you know, the soy milk thing. I think it's like All Pro or something. Like they get these mm. huge industries that boom through vegan products, yet there's no like subsidies. Like you can buy like 50 chicken wings for like two bucks here. Um, you know, like it's like 50 chickens their lives mean nothing but then it yeah. comes down to like some bean burgers that cost you like a fucking arm and a leg not really but if you're buying the processed stuff you know if you eat like whole foods it's cheap as fuck but if you eat the processed kind of stuff which some people want to transition a little bit here and there it's so expensive compared to like yeah. oh, I can just go to mcdonald's and buy you know 30 bucks worth of food and feed a whole village for six months you know what i mean like where does the subsidies come into question for veganism like where, why is there no argument for that um, so I think it's because of the meat and dairy industry, they just have uh, bigger lobbyists. Uh, I think that's a big part of it. Um, but another big part of the cost for why, like, uh, some of these meat alternatives are so expensive is just like a supply and demand thing. Mm -hmm. If more people were buying them, like if as many people bought, uh, I don't know, Beyond Burgers as normal burgers, the Beyond yeah. Burgers would probably be the same Fun price, size. if not like cheaper. Yeah. Can you imagine um, how cheap that would be if there was yeah. like a majority of people eating those kind of options and how much they yeah. can make them so cheap? Like it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest, uh, I think the biggest factor with cost difference is uh, supply and demand, not really the subsidies. Subsidies, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how they work in Australia, but in the U.S., 
It's more like if you're in like really bad financial situation where for some reason, I don't know, you had a bad year for output or something and you just <laughs> need money to keep your farm afloat. Like that's what the subsidies uh, for the yeah, most yeah. part are, are used for here. Yeah. Um, but farm, farmers I'm, in Australia are like a fucking protected species. Like I don't understand this obsession yeah. with it where it's like if you are uh, outspoken against um, farming practices almost, even if they're horrific, like they're like stabbing sheep in the face with swords it's like oh you can't talk about farmers like that that they're, they're australia's built on farmers you can't say that that's fucking wrong so it's like this protected species kind of thing like same here we have like this cultural obsession with bacon and eggs and all this stupid shit like i, I just don't get it um but it just seems like you know brainwashing i guess um, australia is so fucked in so many ways like you have the most corrupt government on the planet i swear yeah, we do. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. You know, the other thing as well, yeah. we're talking about like the drugs or whatever. Um, I thought this was illegal because I know like you can't really advertise like cigarettes on television, but it, we like Australia is a very heavily sport orientated country. I don't know if you know, but we have our own version of football, which we call like Australian rules football. It's called like AFL, but it's different to like US football or whatever, like gridiron or whatever. It's kind of like that. It's not soccer. It's kind of like right. gridiron or whatever you call it over there. Um, but between ads like the ad breaks between all the sports here it's either gambling or alcohol that they advertise in my mind i thought it was illegal to advertise alcohol but apparently it's okay on tv like you can advertise the shit out of it isn't that like kind yeah. of hypocritical like i mean isn't that kind of weird it's insanely that we... hypocritical yeah alcohol is yeah. the number one cause of emergency room visits and then you can advertise it just That's... fine but like, yeah for but some reason like, cigarettes oh, are regulated you can't talk about that yeah yeah and, and and mental health in this country is fucked like really bad so yeah them promoting alcohol during ad breaks for sport which goes hand in hand with gambling you know people get drunk then they gamble more you know or they yeah. get drunk and make these big and they do on these ads like in between sports like here's gambling here's alcohol here's gambling here's alcohol it's kind of like this stupid sick industry that pisses me off and uh, yeah. horse racing is a huge thing here where it's like the race that stops a nation they call it that's the tagline and uh horses die all the time in this race and it's this huge fucking event everyone dresses up in cheap dresses and suits and drinks and gets drunk and like watches horse racing like it's some fucking cultural event I just, I don't know. I just like get sick of living here sometimes where I'm like, you know, Canada seems like a great option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know a bit about Australian culture because I have like some Australian friends and stuff and I watch Friendly Geordies. Like, oh, he's cool. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Him. It's like, it, it's weird, man. It's like the entire country is run by rednecks, kind of. It's really strange. <laughs> yeah. They're like hanging on to the old political beliefs. But, um, but thank yeah. you for your time, man. And, uh, yeah. it's good to see you seem like in a pretty good mood. Um, not that yeah, you're not yeah. in a good mood, but you seem doing like you're doing pretty well, you know? I'm, uh, like, I've taken a break from doing response videos to morons and I've just been streaming more <laughs> and I've just been like a lot yeah. happier and just focusing on lifting too. Good, man. I get it. It's what makes me more, more like isolated. Like I'm pretty good um, extroverted or socially, but I tend to go introvert, introverted and spend more time at home these days because I just find people annoying and stupid and logically inconsistent. So, you know. Yeah. Um, Have you ever uh, way, tried VR chat? What's that? Have you ever tried VR chat? VR chat? What's up? Yeah, you don't have to have VR to do it, but um, okay. yeah, look at look it up. Um, it's a game, but you just talk to people and you can make your own avatar. You might dig that. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and yeah. you know, if you ever need someone to jump in and do a debate with you, I'd be more than happy to. So. All right, no um, problem, dude. But thank you for your time, man. Take care. Yeah, no problem. Take care. Okay, um, I think I'll get the last three people in the Discord in, and then I'll end the stream. Um, let me just write it down somewhere. I don't have a fucking... What's it called? Word anymore installed on here. So we've got... Okay. Um, Stop Asian Hate donated $2. Do you like Lord of the Rings? Yeah, um, I enjoyed the trilogy. I don't think it aged super, super well, but it. I think they're still pretty decent movies to watch. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed Lord of, Lord of the Rings. Uh, I liked it when it was new, for sure. Um, maybe I'll give the trilogy another watch. Uh, haven't seen it in a while. But thanks for the donation. Uh, donation Stop Asian Hate. It's kind of a weird name. Do people hate Asians? I like Asians. All right, what's going on, dude?
Do you hear me? Hello? Will you be streaming again tonight? Oh. Yep, I will. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey. Yeah, um, so I wanted to ask you a few questions. Sure. Uh, first, I, I just want to say that um, the Vans shoes um, ha are no longer vegan. They removed uh, their vegan filter and they are changed the material so that none of their shoes uh, are vegan friendly anymore. Yeah, so people know. Oh, that's gay. Yeah, it's really annoying. I really like them, honestly. They were so nice. Yeah, I have a pair. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, but but they change like the materials from season to season, so they might come back, you know. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Anyways, so um, I wanted to talk about um, vegan, like vegan jobs and uh, race preferences in uh, dating, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So, um, are there any jobs that you would consider non-vegan? Um, like working in a slaughterhouse, maybe. Um, here's the thing, dude, like it, it's, it's a weird issue because a lot of people don't have, um, like a wide flexibility with job options, especially if yeah. you're younger, especially if you're uneducated. So if the alternative is like, okay, you have to be homeless. Um, I, I'd, I'd say like, okay, you know, if the, if the only alternative is being homeless, I think it's fine working at like a KFC or a McDonald's or a bar or whatever. Um, get whatever job you can. If you have job flexibility, like, um, and you're educated, then I'd say, yeah, you should probably choose the job that doesn't require you to accommodate, like, you know, animal products. Now, I've heard you said. I've heard you said, like, on another stream that, like, um, you could that. Uh, McDonald's, um, you would consider that like if uh, if it will uh, go bankrupt if you don't work there, then then you shouldn't take the job. Like if no one right. else is gonna take the job, then you shouldn't, because then you're like ma helping the industry stay afloat. Right. But uh, like McDonald's, like has vegan, like if the restaurant has vegan options, would that True, be the same yeah. thing? Hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, that's like okay. in the future, hypothetically, like there's probably a good chance if McDonald's survives another few decades, like there's a good chance their entire menu might go vegan. So I don't know. So, yeah. And I mean, cause in my town, like if there are most, there are a lot of restaurants that don't have vegan options. So McDonald's has, so if we remove McDonald's, then people might go to other right. restaurants that don't have. But like, right. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, but but surely, uh, like things like gro grocery stores are like always okay, right? Because they have a lot of plants and shit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess in order to be logically consistent, I'd have to say, you probably don't want to shut down places like McDonald's since they do actually have vegan options. Yeah. Because yeah, if we're going to be consistent, we'd have to say, okay, you can't work like in a grocery store or something. Uh, unless you make yeah. the, unless you make the argument that uh, the grocery store has a higher percentage of uh, vegan options than McDonald's. Right, right. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, what? What? Like, um, if race preferences in dating, my my position is that like, technically, like technically speaking, you can make the argument that it's like technically racist, but it, it can't be more right. I don't like, okay, so racist is like racism is kind of the idea that one race is superior to another. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I wouldn't say it's racist to have some sort of racial preference when it comes to dating um, necessarily. Like if you're, I don't know, just more physically attracted to white women compared to black women, you just find white women are more physically attractive. I wouldn't say that's racist. But, but, um, but, yeah, go on. Oh, sorry. I I have a habit of interrupting. I'm, I'm, but I, well, anyway. So, um, yeah. So, but I may not like technically thinking that the uh, white women are superior because I find them more attractive, and in a sense, I think they are superior, like in attractiveness. Couldn't that like technically be racist? 
No, uh, because that's just your own preference. Like, I mean, you might also find thin women more attractive than fat women. That that doesn't mean, I don't know, you're... I, I don't see how having some sort of preference with physical appearance, like, necessarily makes you racist. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess that makes make sense. Yeah, but I mean, e even if it was racist, in my like, technically racist, in my opinion, it still wouldn't be, like, immoral, because you can't choose like, to not... <laughs> Like, like, again, racism has a specific definition. It usually um, applies to, like, the idea that, like, certain races are superior to other races, and it usually applies to things like intelligence. Um, but, like, dating and sexual selection, it's inherently discriminatory. So I don't yeah. think anybody would have a problem with you discriminating based on, like, a number of factors when it comes to dating and sex. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I know some people have, and I just wanted to ask that. And and uh, can I just uh, one can I ask one quick like training question if that's okay? Sure. So, like uh, you have, I heard you say that uh, in order to uh, uh, build muscle, you have you have to use at least sixty percent of your one rep max. Now in weightlifting, that's very straightforward. But when it comes to calisthen calisthenics, how do I like calculate sixty percent of my like one weight max? Like this. So uh, you don't necessarily have to calculate it. Like there's a lot of training where you never consider percentages. But um, chances are, if you can do more than uh, twenty repetitions, it's below sixty percent of your like uh, one RM. Like there's some exercises where there's no way to calculate your one RM, but you, yeah. you can approximate what a, an an all out max would be, and you can approximate like what a certain like you know relative intensity is. I'd say if you can do like over twenty repetitions, it's probably below sixty percent of your one RM. There's a good chance anyway. Um, and then once you get to that point, you can try you can try to add load in some way, like wear a weighted vest. Uh, maybe you can perform the exercise slower so it's a bit more uh, difficult, things like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, um, and like, but can those, like, rep, uh, the amount of reps, like, like matter? Because I've, I've heard, like, Alpha Destiny talk about people doing, like, hundreds of reps and still building muscle. So is it the yeah. case? So is it the case that as, as long as you, do like uh, with uh, at, I mean with like three reps in reserve or or less, then you will still build muscle. Okay, so you can build muscle below uh, like with using an intensity below sixty percent of your one RM, but the actual stimulus that you're going to get from that that will it's not going to be nearly as significant as using sixty percent or more of your one rep max. So you like it, let's say you can do I don't know fifty pull ups like okay maybe that's a bad example maybe you can do uh, fifty push ups or or more that's clearly below uh, you know sixty percent of your uh, theoretical one rep max. So you can still build muscle, you can still build a bigger chest. It's just that you have to do way, way, way more total volume. So you're going to have to do way more sets. You're going to have to do more training sessions if you're just going to use body weight push ups to build your chest. You will still get a muscle building stimulus from that. It, it's just not going to be nearly as significant as if you did uh, weighted push ups or a bench press or something like that. So yeah, you like if you're in a situation where you can't add any more load and you know you can do like a ton of repetitions, like the only way to try and build more muscle is to just do more sets, uh, more like more weekly volume overall, or harder variations, right? Yeah, or more difficult variations. Like you can change the uh, tempo. Um, you can do like clapping push-ups where you have to generate more force, things like that. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I will uh, take the other points, uh, some, the next uh, stream. Okay, Cause you, cause all right, you take have... care, dude. Oh, yeah, bye. Okay, bye. Um, Richard Singh donated $2. He didn't have anything to say, but thanks for the donation, uh, Richard Singh. Um, let me just get my notes here. Okay, so we've got... Two more people in, and then we're going to end the stream. Hey, what's up, dude?
Uh, hello, Richard. Um, one moment, I've just got a um, little notepad here, just so I didn't forget my points. Um, yeah, so uh, just to kind of let you know, I guess, um, but I've been watching you since like 2015 when you kind of first started your YouTube channel, and uh, you were the main driver between uh, kind of turning me vegan, so thanks for that. Um, and you, you're very good at your debates and your arguments, and I've used them quite a lot um, in person to try and uh, turn people vegan. I've ended up turning my aunt and my aunt's partner vegan from kind of watching you and using your arguments. Okay, cool. That's dope. Um, so the first kind of question I have here, it's uh, kind of uh, about about ethics of buying and wearing animal clo clothes. So stuff like uh, um, if you were to buy boots or like a fur jacket, but if you were to buy it from something like a charity shop, so something where it's been donated, so you're not actually um, like increasing demand, you're simply just kind of buying it what, what, what do you think about that sure um you know i i'd recommend not doing that uh just because you're supporting the fashion like if somebody sees you wearing a fur coat they might also like be like um you know, you know encouraged to buy a fur coat if you support that sort of fashion uh, i think you are kind of supporting the wearing of fur so if you ever have the opportunity to buy like a vegan uh, coat or something, I'd say get a vegan coat rather than um, a secondhand fur coat or, or leather jacket. Mm -hmm. Just get a vegan option uh, just because I, I think it is a problem to kind of encourage people to wear that sort of clothing. Okay. What about stuff like um, like uh, stuff like suede? Well, I have um, some vegan shoes um, and they look like suede. Uh, but they're not actually, yeah. what would you think yeah. about that? Because everyone kind of wears that stuff, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So fake leather is so ubiquitous. I think it's a little bit different. And there's certain circumstances where you literally can't avoid it. Um, I'm looking at buying a new pair of rollerblades hmm. uh, that are carbon fiber. They have like accents that look like leather, but I confirmed with the company, like they're, they're fake. It's just synthetic leather. That's the only roller blades I can get that are carbon fiber that I kind of need since I'm really fucking heavy and I need a, a really stiff boot. Like, that's the only option. I have a uh, motorcycle gear, too, that's vegan. And again, it's it, it has a fake leather look to it. Mm -hmm. I need safety equipment. And, you know, since there's no option that looks not leather, like, that's the only thing I can go with. And uh, since fake leather is so ubiquitous, I, I don't think you're necessarily um, supporting like the leather industry in any kind of indirect way by wearing something that's fake. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and also, people who have transitioned to veganism, um, but they still have products, uh, they still have clothing that's animal products, so they still have like a fur coat or they still have leather shoes um what would you say would be the best thing to do would you say that they should throw it away or donate it or sell it um because if they you know, yeah they're, they're, they're so yeah so if you don't have much money and like it would be a pretty significant expense for you to buy like a replacement i'd say just keep it and use it um if you're well off like me if you make a decent amount of money i, I just say like throw it out just get a vegan pair Oh, okay. um, I wouldn't recommend selling it just because, okay, well, now somebody else is going to wear it. So, like, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Um, and then my next question I have here um, is about transitioning to a whole foods diet. Um, I'm not really the best with cooking and um, kind of uh, making myself eat healthily. I, I eat a lot of fruit um, when it's available, uh, but I usually kind of eat processed stuff and, like... Um, stuff that isn't isn't the best for me how what would you say would be the best kind of tips for eating a whole food plant-based diet um, transitioning from yeah so i'd recommend uh just like easy recipes where you can use some sort of apparatus like an instant pot um instant pots make it super fucking easy to like cook anything um look for some good vegan instant pot recipes it's just brainless you literally just throw a bunch of shit into a pot and then you put it on a setting and then you, you can leave it all day um, because it has like a keep warm setting. So you can like make a, a meal like right when you get up and then for lunch or for dinner, it'll be right there for you ready. Um, I, I think the main reason people have trouble with, you know, eating whole foods and shit is just because of the hassle of, you know, cooking and crap. Mm -hmm. But uh, using something like an instant pot with pretty easy recipes uh, I think that's a way around that where you 
don't really have the excuse to be that lazy anymore because it, it's just so easy. Um, and yeah, I, I just look for easy recipes in general. I have a few uh, pretty decent recipes on my channel. Like I have a lentil loaf recipe yeah. uh, that tastes good and it's pretty easy. Like my type of cooking, it's not super complicated or fancy. Like I always make things that are pretty easy to make. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd say just do easy shit like that. Um, I mean, you can be really, really basic and just get like oatmeal, some uh, like a like brown sugar substitute. There's like really, really good brown sugar substitutes that have zero calories that taste exactly like brown sugar. You just dump it into the oatmeal and mix it around. There you go, healthy meal. Oh, okay. Um, have you have you heard of? Um, I, I'm not sure whether you've, whether you've read it or not, but uh, Dr. Michael Greger's How Not to Die and his How Not to Diet cookbook. Have you read any of those by any chance? Yeah, yeah, I've read How Not to Die. Um, would you say that the? Would you recommend buying that, or would you say it's not really worth it? I can just do it myself. No, um, like it, it depends if you want. Uh, I don't know um, some sort of resource like resource with research links on you know. Um, how food impacts, you know, disease risk, uh, then yeah, I get it. Uh, he also has the how not to die cookbook, which I don't think is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of fine with, with knowing what to eat. It's just kind of putting myself in the position to do it. Cause, uh, kind of culturally my, my parents are from the Caribbean. So they're a lot of plant food and stuff, um, is using, using their cooking. So it's just the kind of problem with put, putting myself into the position to make it. Um, but in regards to that, thank you for answering that question. And just uh, one additional one here, um, just about diversifying your content on YouTube. Um, like b back in the day, you know, back in like 2016 or so, you, you were getting a lot of views. Obviously, there was a lot of big YouTubers covering you and, and whatnot. And um, you're reaching a lot of people. Um, do you think you'll kind of go back to that more kind of controversial, um, kind of hard hitting stuff that gets a lot of views on your channel? Or I don't know. Um, like right now, I'm just focusing on um, a good balance between making content that people enjoy and mental health. And right now, uh, I think the streams are doing really well. People are enjoying that. Um, I've gotten like really burnt out just dealing with absolute insane stupidity for so long. Mm -hmm. um, I'll still be making like response videos and stuff, but we'll see. Um, I'll go in whatever direction like I'm comfortable with that gives me a good balance between you know everything. Are you not re really worried about um, kind of getting views and subscribers? Like, of course, um, not because you get more money from it, but because it reaches more people. So, like when you were doing those um, answers to like, like if it's not sustainable, it's it's not sustainable, right? Um, I, I've just gotten burnt out doing the response videos that I used to do, and it's just not sustainable, and I wasn't enjoying it, okay. so. Like, I, I at least have to take a break for now. Yeah, and um, just the last thing about diversifying the content. Um, would you say that in the future, you know, when COVID kind of, um, when it gets more under control, would you have any uh, videos in about kind of in real life activism where you're going to be doing any stuff? I remember you- I was one. planning on doing that. Yeah. Uh, I was planning on doing that the last year, but then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you reckon you'll do some uh, in the future or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, I'll do some IRL activism stuff and film it. Okay. And um, with your, you know, when you were talking to Happy Healthy Vegan, I think it is, Ryan, um, you were talking mm -hmm. about how your, your kind of your method of activism is quite hard hitting and it, you, you kind of tell people logically, you speak to them and you say, you're doing, what you're doing is wrong, change now, here is why it's wrong. Um, do you feel that you could kind of do stuff more like uh, kind of Earthling Ed's approach where you would talk to people and kind of allow them to get the, the conclusion? I feel that that's... Um, kind of better in helping people well, well most people kind of come to the conclusion because a lot of people uh, don't like being told what to do it kind of depends uh, I always hold people account accountable mm -hmm. and if they're going to push back on what I'm saying then I'm just going to challenge their idea um, so oh. yeah um, I change the way I make arguments depending on who I'm talking to to some extent but uh, regardless of who I'm talking to, like I'm always going to like refer to the animal agriculture industry as a holocaust. Mm -hmm. That's that's fair. Um, yeah, um, that's cool, man. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Have a nice day, man. You you seem very very happy um, with the kind of content that you've been putting out, and you seem in a much better mood than you did you know a couple of months ago. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, dude. Thank you, man. Stay safe. Bye, bye.
Yeah, for sure. Take care. Okay, we're gonna have one more person uh, come on the Discord. Rella, Rella, Rella. Pizza, mozzarella. Pizza, mozzarella. Pizza, pizza, mozzarella, hella, hella, hey, hey, pizza, mozzarella, pizza, mozzarella. That one was for you, Johnny, you sexy little bitch. Golden ratio on my dick boy, we. Alright, I'm assuming that's Cade using a different name, but uh, thank you for sharing that. I actually hate cheese on pizza. I can't fucking stand it. I uh, always have pizza without cheese, but thanks for that donation, Gyro Zapelli. I'm sh pretty sure that's Cade. Chickpea flour donated two dollars. Do you think an iodine deficiency in late teens to adulthood can cause brain damage if it is coupled with persistent insomnia? Um, yeah, probably. So iodine deficiencies do lead to mental retardation. You can find landlocked areas where people don't have any access to iodine, and you can find entire villages where people are all mentally disabled because they lack iodine. I feel like that is what happened to me. Also, how much do you think intelligence plays a role in making moral decisions? Thanks. Um, I think intelligence plays a pretty significant role in making moral decisions, but you don't necessarily have to be that intelligent to come to uh, some of these conclusions. Like, I, I've seen people who are literally mentally disabled who are vegan um, just because they can understand that, you know, harming something else is wrong. Um, I would say maybe for some more complex moral issues, um, uh, you could have an issue where, th where if you're not intelligent enough to understand the situation, then, um, you know, obviously intelligence would play a, a much bigger role, but yeah, for like basic issues, like, eh, should I kill animals or should I like, I don't know, eat vegetables? Like it's, it's pretty obvious, but thanks for the nation chickpea flower. Appreciate it. Okay. Last person into the discord. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up? Hey, not much. Yeah. So, uh, I want to uh, first thing first. I want to make a statement for the the guy that from Philippines, you know, that asked how to be vegan in Philippines. Sure. Yeah. So, I'm from third world country too. So we are poor and we don't have like any alternative like in the first world country. For people like us, people from I'm from Indonesia. He's from Philippines and any other country that is poor. I think it's easier to be vegan because we used to eat vegetables. You can just search your country and then put vegan food after that. Yeah. 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 So that's my first statement. And then I think this is not a question. I, I think this is like an idea for, for you or maybe some other content creators that want to do a video. Uh, you know, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I want to I want people like you that have a platform to speak about veganism to uh make Mr. Beast hypocrisy uh you know like Mr. Beast hypocrisy that he say plant 20 million trees but he's starting a business like fast food business that involves meat and stuff. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, they, he make like beast burger and stuff, but it's fucking plant 20 million. 20 I'll look into that. Trees. Maybe I'll make a video about that. I didn't know he was yeah. doing that. Yeah, it's very fucked up. I'm so I'm so angry about He's that. He's just a vir like all these people are just virtue signaling assholes. They like they oh, oh I want to save trees of the planet. Like no, you know, you're just doing this for publicity and to make yourself look good and to make more money. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, maybe if you make a video, it will go boom, but you will get a lot of hate, but you're used to it. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I laugh and chuckle whenever I see these idiots come by. Yeah, I think, yeah, I only want to say that. So thank you for having me. All right. Okay, take Bye. care, dude. Okay, uh, that's it for the Discord. I'm going to end the stream now-ish, so if you have any last questions, just ask now. Um, and of course the stream is going to stay up and uh, Steve Shaw will be forever embarrassed. Yeah, I think um, Steve actually deleted the stream from his channel. He always leaves his other streams up, but it looks like this time 
he deleted it. Uh, I guess he has some sort of emotional reason for doing so. <clears throat> Were you serious about killing wild cats? Yes. I have a house cat here who is meowing. <laughs> Prismo. 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 What you doing? Come here. I don't know what he's meowing about. I have no idea what he's complaining about. He just does that. Okay, um... So, uh, yeah, stream's gonna stay up, so if any of you missed the hilarious Steve Shaw freakouts, you can, uh, watch again. If anybody, any of you want to re-upload, uh, the stream, by the way, uh, feel free. Uh, I don't care if anybody shares clips or whatever, you can upload the entire stream to your channel if you want. I think the more people see, uh, Steve Shaw <laughs> flip out, <laughs> the better. Um... So I'm probably going to do another stream later tonight, uh, probably going to be some sort of gaming stream. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Big thanks to everyone who donated on Streamlabs, really appreciate it. And as always, keep making those vegan games. My god. <laughs>